E King's Cross 5, yep. Okay. Alright, so. I updated all of my stream website stuff. So, if anything is not working, please let me know. I'm hoping everything just kind of works now. Hey, JG. Okay. All right. This is uh, this incredible remix here. Hey, Gander. What's up, folks? So, yeah. Uh, hopefully the, the site is, is not bursting into flames right now. I changed pretty much everything. Let me... Uh, let me hit refresh on my website and see if it uh, if it's working. I see things are loading. I'm loading up the load delay stream and yeah, yeah, yeah there's me, there's my forehead. <laughs> yep. So okay, it appears things are working. Great. You'd just be wondering if there's a stream tonight. I, I always say um, if you're in my Discord, go to the general channel. Of my Discord. Apparently, some people don't know about this. Uh, oh, I don't have Discord on this computer. Anyways, uh, on my Discord, there's a channel called General 2 Electric Boogaloo. You gotta kind of scroll down the channel list. Um, and uh, that is where I say if there's gonna be a stream. Um, I guess I could also put it in stream announcements, just not without an add everybody in it. Um, uh,. I guess I could do that too, because it's it's at the top of the the channel list. But I do mention like five or so hours before each stream if I'm gonna stream. So that's that's hell no. Yeah, the IM is is chroma keyed because it's green. So <laughs> that's why. That's why I have some red ones, but they uh, they're less comfortable. They're the um, the larger red ones, and those I found for. Uh, for something as long as a stream that I do is, it's uh, it really hurts my ears after six hours or so. Um, so I, I instead went with the smaller green ones, and they actually have these um, uh, these foam tips on them. They're by a, a company called Comply. So they're not the uh, the silicone tips. They're uh, they're these memory foam tips. That, uh, that come in packs like this. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, they're actually kind of expensive. Um, but I, I think it's worth it to me. So they um, they make tips for like pretty much any kind of uh, earphone that you, you put inside your ears. And these are so comfy that I used to wear these um, while sleeping. When I used a white noise machine and, and, um, and headphones. I don't do that anymore because I, I sleep... A little bit better these days, but uh, but yeah, those uh, these are comfortable enough that you can wear them while you're sleeping with the um, the special memory foam tips. So, <clears throat> yep. Well, it it seems there is a lot more confusion lately with like uh, like I even say, hey, I'm going to be streaming today, and then I still get people going, oh, I didn't know you're streaming today, so. Uh, I got to do something different, I guess, but but thank you for for not asking me, at least. So. After your workout today, my workout for the last like 3 months has been climb a climb a flight of stairs. It's been very strenuous. Okay, well, well good. It sounds like the website's working for once, which is that's promising. <laughs> so I I uh I've been sick the last few days and I had to work the last few days on actual work for once. Um, and I've also, I also completely changed how my website is delivered and how it's hosted and all that. So it should, it should work now um, for everything. Cause I have separate servers for the website, separate servers for the, the stream video, separate servers for the, the Titan Discord embed. And then another one for the, the VOD hosting that has a bunch of hard drives in it. So everything should actually work now. Amazing, and it, it is kind of working today, so good. This pleases me, because this is very rare that things actually work. Okay, all right, let's let's uh, let's get cracking here. We got two things that we're doing tonight. We're on part three of Kodelka, and we're also going to be starting and probably finishing, I'm guessing, King's Quest V. 
Uh, we finally got into the King's Quest games that I've actually played before. Uh, and I used to speedrun King's Quest V. So I, I know my way around, but that doesn't mean I'm going to speedrun through it. We're still going to play with a Let's Play mindset for King's Quest V and, and go through all that and all the amazing dialogue and voice acting. Uh, so I believe I got everything set up for that. I did some electrical work on my retro PC yesterday. I pulled out the Sound Blaster card and replaced two of the components on it with my um, uh, my hot air station, and I just happened to have some capacitors in a box over there, so I, I swapped out the capacitors, and now it sounds slightly better without that uh, that hiss that was in the, the left audio channel. So hopefully that won't be an issue moving forward. Okay, so part three of Kodelka. We are seven hours in, 24 saves. We've had three game overs. The One of those game overs was bullshit. The other two I deserved. <laughs> And, uh, as always, here is what happened previously on Kodelka. Previously. I don't really care. Is. What the? <laughs> this is a new mechanic. Hmm. Hello, Fabian. Wait. De uh. Well, well, we'll find out if this is a a fight you're supposed to lose or not. And it probably yep, it is. Shit. Okay. Or I just defeat him. Okay, that works too. But now Kodelka misses out on the XP. Oh, well, whatever. Go back this way. And then walk off the path here onto this, over to this, and then up to that, perhaps? Like walking back through the room and then that unlocks the door. Maybe you have to hit all the... All right. Ah, uh, Kodelka. Okay, I gotta turn off some things here. So we need to turn off the rolling cam. Turn on that. And everything else seems good. Actually, I gotta turn off the... Turn off MT32. Turn on toss link. Okay. All right. All right, Kodelka. Server upgrade's actually working? Nice. <laughs> Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so we're on disc two here. Good. Controller input monitor is working. Okay. Fan of the quick recaps? Nice. I uh, I mostly made them for me so that I can remember what the hell we did last time. <laughs> but I'm glad you guys enjoy them. They, uh, they don't take long to make because I've gotten pretty good at, um, at uh, like cataloging stuff. Um, so it, it's not like it takes me four hours a day to do those. It's, it's more like 20, 15, 20 minutes tops to, to do those. Okay. <clears throat> you like the PSIO? The, the PSIO has got some weird, weird quirks with it. Um, I don't think I show how long it takes for it to load, but it takes, it takes forever to load the PSIO. Like... <laughs> It's like a minute after um, after turning on the PlayStation. Like it, it's completely unlike any other ODE that I've used before, and I have almost every single ODE that's that's been made. Um, so that's why I always have my PlayStation on at the start of the stream. Okay, so this is our our latest save. It looks like. So uh, let's get the timer going here, and back at it. So I. Hey, Hidden. Hello, folks. Welcome. The, uh, the website should be fully, fully working and quick now. So if, uh, if you all want to use the, the site and the, the embedded Discord, it should actually work now. Um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, at the end of the last time we played this, I, uh, I was stuck in that room that had the puzzle thing on the floor. 
And I, I'll admit it. I looked up what the solution was because I thought about it for like an hour after, after the stream that night, and I could not come up with a way to to do that puzzle. Um, why is this? Okay, whatever. whatever. We'll just go through here. Um, so I looked up the solution, and I it appears I made a bad assumption as to how that puzzle works so we'll we'll get into that when we get into the room so i'll i'll tell you my thinking and why my thinking was was wrong when we get in there all right so we we didn't do a whole hell of a lot last time we played for like two and a half or three hours and all we really accomplished was getting a few plot things in the, the basement and then defeating this guy um and then that was that was pretty much it so so sure Oh, nice, it actually works now. Okay, so, so, so here is one of the hints that the game gives you, okay? So it's the, the red line is the important line here. Um, and this, this pretty much matches what my notes show. Like it, it just, it looks like that. That's pretty much identical to what the notes say. And, and make, oh geez. Make note here of this. This is the important part, and this is what threw me off. So this map here always goes at right angles. It's all right angles, right? There are no 45 degree angles at all on this. And then the other one uh, was the one on the, the that hallway, which was this, which was in a box with four symbols and it's just top to bottom like that. <laughs> yeah, you, you see where I'm going with this, JG? <laughs> so, so yes, uh, you gotta, you gotta walk onto this as, as the first one in the, in the series here, and then onto this one, and then over to this one, and then up to this one. So then, from here, from here, this implies that you got to go straight up from here. And it, it seems the way you're actually supposed to do this is like this. You're actually supposed to go diagonal onto this one. And then it's up, down, down. Yeah. So that's... So you can see why I was so confused as to why this was not working last time. Because the game itself that they they make sure to show you at the beginning of the puzzle has this going up. <sighs> so so fuck this puzzle. I I was right. <laughs> like this is this is bad design. This is bad. Okay. All right, library second floor. So progress. Oh boy. So yeah, that's that's Kodelka for you. Okay. <laughs> Super precise with the control. I I don't I don't think it's that uh, that precise. You just have to. Just go straight, uh, straight diagonal. Okay. All right. So, um, oh god, don't put the save any. Why doesn't it just? Okay. All right. So let's take stock of our plot stuff so far. So we still don't have access to a map, but in the key items here, we have a uh, stone tablet. So according to this, we have a stone tablet that is the map but backwards. And it looks like we need to put ink on this and then press it onto a piece of paper and then that's our map. Even though we clearly know that it's the backwards map. So why not just give us the map? But okay, sure. Um, we got Daniel's arm, which is a mummified arm that was inside a statue. We got this after the cutscene of the guy shooting the chandelier. 
Um, let's see. We got two two sets of statues. Uh, a goat statue and a lion statue. The lion statue is apparently supposed to be shoved into something, according to the description. So, uh, not sure about that. Um, red key. This unlocked the the door into this area, and it also will unlock the door into the uh, the couples, the the caretakers room in the in the monastery if we ever get back there. Um, we have two sets of glass parts, and the the red one that we got had a, a piece of text on it saying. If we look through it, it'll make colors seem different. Um, and there hasn't been a mechanism for that yet. Uh, we got a music box, uh, which I'm sure that's used for something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Daniel's are. <laughs> uh, we have three things in here that are supposed to be put on a statue, according to the, the description, but we don't have a use for those yet either. Um, as far as things that we haven't been able to get through, um, under underground, we found a vat of acid that says we need a container of some sort to keep the acid in. Haven't found that yet. Um, there's a green key that unlocks green doors, and that is um, currently held by a puzzle battle. So there's two ghost twins that, that they say they want their doll, and we can't actually hit them. So that means we have to, we have to get some sort of item and use it in the battle uh, to actually get the green key. So that's another thing we haven't gotten yet. Um, and then I think that's, that's pretty much, much up, back up to, to speed here. Okay. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. All right. So as always, let me know if there's, there's any issues with the site while the stream is going. Because it's not like I can, I can check, but hopefully everything should be running, running smoothly now. Okay, so this is, uh... This is Glass Guy. I don't, I don't know how strict this game is with leveling and being up to, to level. But in fights like this against like single opponents, I might as well, might as well win. Uh, this one makes this guy. All working super fast, nice. Yeah, I, uh, I'm. I'm not super sure why my old arrangement wasn't working quickly, but, but whatever, <laughs> whatever. As long as it, it's currently working, then we're good. Okay. Can't believe that thing survived a thousand damage. I wonder if there's, um, if there's scaling this game of enemies because it's it seems like we faced some of these enemies before and this guy didn't tank 1200 worth of damage previously he died at like 400 so hmm. I wonder if this uh, this is like Final Fantasy 8 style uh, stats okay Okay. All right, we got a lance. So that's that's another thing that we've we learned last time is that we have a limited inventory, and there's no mention of that in the game or in the manual. Nothing. Uh, and I don't know if the limited inventory is all of your items or if it's just weapons you have a limited space for or or what. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's all the items, though. So if we if we got rid of like a bread, for example, we could probably have room for this uh, this other thing. And it's unfortunate that all these plot items apparently take up inventory space too. Uh, so the mace we want to keep, the dark dirk, normal L sword, we're keeping all that. Earth mail, fire badge, fire dagger. We have shotgun shells, but we have no shotgun. Hey, my box. Uh, we do have this normal knife. We might as well get rid of that thing. Okay. Okay. All right. So we got a note. All right. You got to be standing like directly on it. Okay. This is not a. 
Not something we can examine, apparently. Neither is this. Okay. Poker glass. Okay. Is it going to say you need... To oh my god. Okay, so that... That confirms that, I guess. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is... I have... It, it it almost makes me wonder, like, like the the icons earrings. What if that is, like, these are just red red herring items that are just supposed to take up room in your inventory. Uh, God, well, I can't get rid of the healing items. So we're gonna have to just start start dumping dumping these. Um, MP drain. Especially the hit. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the spear. We might as well clear some more space, too. Knuckles, sure. Let's get rid of those. Uh, this bow gun, I'm not at all convinced that this thing's any good. Since you can only use it once. You can only shoot it once. And then you have to, like, manually reload it. So, I don't know. I, I think we'll, we'll get rid of that thing. We might as well get rid of the, the bow gun ammo. Because we only have nine shots. <laughs> Like, that thing seems especially useless. Okay, so we better have a good use for all these... Uh, all these pieces of glass that we're just collecting. Okay. It's locked. Okay. I haven't... You're unlikely to just by... Oh, man, are they... Okay, so they don't let you brute force it. Okay, so if we ever come across any Greek letters, we're going to have to make a note of them. They don't even let you brute force it. What the hell? I thought this was an RPG. How... Man, she can really turn her head. Like... <laughs> like that's... All right. Sure. Okay. Um, so that that looks like that's everything we can do here, as far as I can see. Yep, Kudokus and Owl. There's a uh, there's owls that um, that are live in the the area around me, and man, owls are really loud. Uh, I don't think we fought one of these things before, so let's let's try giving it the business. Because they um, they just sit on my uh, uh, the roof of my apartment sometimes and just hoot, and goddamn, I can hear them through my my earbuds. That's how loud they are, and it's at like four in the morning. Uh, okay, so this thing probably tornado is my guess. So this is like floating orb baby. See if Ord Baby is weak to being stabbed with the, a sword. Man, this game. <laughs> Legion. Okay, so wind works worked okay. So I, I actually do have to write, in, write these down because this game has an elemental um, resistance and healing and and weaknesses. Um, so if you cast the wrong element at uh, at an enemy, you can just it'll just be healed by whatever amount of damage it would have been. 
and there's no real indication of of what it might be ahead of time, so you just kind of have to guess in a lot of cases, which is which is not great. W Pata. Okay. Sure. Yeah, this this game does a lot of things really well in my opinion, but some of the mechanical stuff is is a little a little iffy to me. Uh earth. So it's specialty poison, it doesn't earth attack. It's uh it looks like it's probably a a hand to hand as like knuckles maybe. I don't know what the hell that thing is. It looks like two razor blades, but okay. It looks like something I won't be using for now. <laughs> All right, I think we're done with this room. Uh, can we do anything with this? Nothing out of the ordinary here. Okay. After all that King's Quest, got to make sure to check every bookshelf. Because Roberta Williams loves to hide things in bookshelves. Uh, it looks like whatever's on the, s the first floor of this is probably where we're going to use that uh, the stained glass things, I'm guessing. Might have been a door here, but it's gone now. Okay. You'll have to look for a door somewhere else. Well, well why put the... Why make a door there? All right, another Legion baby. So Earth and Wind, Earth, Wind, and Stab. The hottest 70s R&B group. Uh, I think Earth worked the best though. Nami. And hey, LCC. Hello. Okay. Now that worked. Oh. She didn't cast yet. Yeah, I hope not. I I hope they don't let you throw away the uh, the required items. I didn't. I did not throw away any question mark items. I only threw away weapons so far because I'm I'm running on the assumption that if I have a question mark item, I probably still need it. But it wouldn't be the first game that I played where they they give you a plot, a quote-unquote plot item, and then never have a use for it. I recall that happening at least once. I think Discworld did that. Uh, this ammo? Oh boy, rifle rounds. Sure. All right. Is this... Oh. What? I, uh... Excuse me? Is there no... Oh, okay. Oh, there's something up there, apparently. Large leave piece missing in the middle. I don't think I have anything shaped like that. God, so we're missing another item. Great. Whoop, okay. Yeah, we are still on disc two. We are still on disc two. Because we, we did make a huge amount of progress last time, because I was 
I was stuck by the incredible floor puzzle. That if, if you miss the solution to the floor puzzle, I'll uh, I'll show it for you here, real quick. So the the thing with the floor puzzle. Um, so here's the hint that they give you. You gotta follow the red line, but the the hint drawing looks like that, where you have to go straight up from the four. Um, but it turns out what you actually have to do is go like this. You have to go diagonal to the, the next part, even though it clearly has a line going straight up. It's just... Amazing. That puzzle. That puzzle. Yeah, you got stuck on the floor too? Yep. Because... Because it's like you have to take their clue and then disregard what the clue says. And that's the solution. Like... And I think that was that was like the first proper puzzle ass puzzle that we've done. And it was it was not great. Okay, so we're we're missing some sort of actually was there uh I don't know why my laptop does this. It just randomly turns on the keyboard sometimes. Do we have anything that is shaped like the So this is I don't know if this is if this is half moon shaped or not. Or half a half a circle. So this is Maybe I should get back up there and then see if the use prompt works. But most of the time if we had an item to use with it, it would have used it during this. Uh Okay, not there. No. Red key, no. Like maybe the lion statue? No. Okay, whatever it is, we don't have it, apparently. Okay. Yeah, this is practically Tomb Raider now. Okay. So we got more bookshelves. We got a bottle of wine over there. Which I think is a listal. High potion, okay. That heals for a thousand, I think. So, pretty useful. Actually, is there another... Anything over here? Nope. Okay. I, I think we've seen something like this before, but it wasn't... It didn't look exactly like this. This was One-Eyed Hopper, I think, and my notes say Fire Bad. So, let's, let's see if fire is still bad. And then, Light Attacks Heal. At least the second 420 we've gotten in this game. Nice. No 69s yet, as far as I'm aware. Unfortunate. Okay, so the only way forward is the the door in front of us. Okay. So weird, like you can see when I when I hit the button. Okay, so here here's what this game keeps doing. 
it it tells you what happens in the cutscene before it shows you the cutscene. Like, I just want to make you happy. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes. That looks like guy in our party. That woman was Lane. She summoned me here. Good thing I programmed in that mute mute mic button. <laughs> uh okay. oh, printing press room. It's map time, boys. Map time. Oh. Fuck, <laughs> Fuck you, go to Uh. Wait. Is there another one? Okay, all right. Okay. Causing the wall behind the press to col Causing the wall behind the press to collapses. Okay. All right, we got the original map. Wait. The wall behind the printing press, but that was the one that we... Okay, I, I guess I did specify which printing press, because there, there's one here, and then there's one here. But this is the wall that opened up, so... Oh, okay. Alright, alright. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, so... Let's take a look at our map. Oh, we got one. Okay, first floor. I guess we spend a lot of our time so far underground. In B1, yeah. We haven't... Uh... So this... This, I'm guessing, is where that green key was. Where we couldn't get past the two ghosts. So clearly we're not supposed to be there yet. Uh... Seventh, oh, geez, okay. Um, so I'm guessing these, these icons are like the, the hard save points, the fountains. Um, and then, so red means locked. Oh, this is, um, so this is, this is where the red key is supposed to be used, and that was the room where we talked to the the two caretakers, and they they fed us the poison soup. Um, so that's where that is. Okay. Um, okay. And two F. We've been to a lot of those rooms. I'm guessing the if it's a check mark, it probably means we have all the items from that room. And if it's an X, it probably means we missed something. But my guess is... Okay, third floor... Alright, looks like there's not much to a lot of these floors. <laughs> looks like we're going to a bell tower at some point. Okay. Alright, good. Um, And it gave me a check mark for this room that we're in, so I'm guessing we got everything we need from there. Very first floor. Okay. 
All right. Uh, this was localized by, it looks like Infogrom. Either that or it was the, the original developers themselves. Infogrom, Infogrames, which I think is uh, a French, uh, French publisher, I want to say. Brought the game out west. Yes. Interesting. Uh, where would we have a large metal disc used at the grand? Oh, okay. Well, I was thinking of where could this possibly be used and a gramophone, it seems. Nope. 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 I'm good. Thanks. I'm good. Thanks. Held shut by... Okay, so this usually means that there's a boss fight we got to do before we can use that. At least that's the way it's been for the last last two things with that. Okay. Um, so pressing, pressing down on this screen makes you go right. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Original Alone in the Dark. Yep. Look at that thing. Holy shit, that's um that's the the bug, the brain bug from uh Starship Troopers. <laughs> and then one of the caster things. The the caster things have so far been more trouble than they're worth in terms of XP. So sure. The Infogram's original song. Oh man. They have they have a company anthem. Nice. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. Okay, so we got another piece of stained glass, it looks like, and then more bullets. Yep, blue glass, okay. Nope, no thanks. Still haven't found a good use for rifles yet in this game. Hole that looks just right for a small statue. What we have... Oh, okay. There just conveniently happens to be a line-shaped hole and a, a goat-shaped hole. Sure. And it automatically does it? You don't even... Okay. Wait, there's also... There's one down here, too. There's... Looks like that's a seahorse, maybe? So we're, we're missing another statue. Okay. And I'm curious if if the room we're in right now is marked as a check mark. It is marked as a check mark. Okay, so maybe that means that we've either picked up or at least examined everything that we could examine in the room. Okay, so what? Um, so we okay. Well, that um that mural thing opened up in the library, so I guess we can go back there because I, I don't think we can do any forward progress this way. Um, so it'll be this way, and is it open now? It kind of looked like it opened, but. I'm trying to think of where we, if we've come across a gramophone previously. Wait, I thought this, this opened. Okay, well, wherever, whatever the item is, we don't have it, I guess. Um, so a gramophone. There might have been one in the, the office where we got the... The stone tablet? I think there's nothing. Yeah, we can't do anything with that. I think we gotta backtrack now. Where even was that office? Okay, glass zombies earth.
Huh. Yeah, so this is this is our only only thing we can we have to work with, I think, right now. Cause I don't think we could we could do anything in the rooms we've been in. Yeah, running around is is pretty slow. <laughs> and with the random battles, like like it sure it's one thing in a survival horror game to be able to run around throughout the map. Um and like dodge zombies in a Resident Evil or something, but in a game like this that has random battles, it it makes the whole exploration part of the survival horror style of gameplay more tedious than it needs to be. And like usually in in RPGs, they they break up a lot of that monotony by having like uh, friendly towns that you could go to and not have to worry about getting into battles all the time. But, uh... No such luck in this one. Um... Yeah, I think, uh... Please go up the stairs. Please? Okay. So far, staircases in this game have been... quite inconsistent. So I don't think we can... We can't interact with any of that from here. This is still a whole lot of nothing. Uh, yeah, like a faster battle system. If they didn't have all these kind of unnecessary pauses and, and animations. Like, I don't know if there's a, a programming reason for why there's these... Um, these pretty slow transition animations. But I can't, uh, I can't really think of one. Okay, there might have been a gramophone this way. Yep. Well, so I'm I'm trying to imagine this game with like maybe the Parasite Eve style battle system. Like, it, it's it, besides the the two battle systems, this is kind of a very similar game to um, something like Parasite Eve. And I think Parasite Eve's battle system might work pretty good in this, but that one is made for only one character at a time um, that you're controlling a battle. So, dang, I, I'm, <laughs> they would have to pretty significantly change this game to, to have something more like that. But, but Parasite Eve is a good example of, of what this could have been. I'm pretty sure Parasite Eve 2 is on PS1 as well, and we haven't done that one yet. And I haven't, um, I haven't played that game before, so looking forward to that one. Whenever we get to it in the next 20 years or so. I'm Legion, baby. Different kind of game. Hey, we got another one of those things. Uh, I don't think we need that, though. Yeah, one was a fantastic game. One was legit amazing. I'm well, glad I played that one. Okay, I don't see a gramophone here. And in the corner here was the... The thing that you can't brute force. Um, oh, there's also a book on the floor. Is that... Uh, can't do anything with that. Okay. Whatever it is, it's not here, apparently. Yeah, those mitochondria. The powerhouse of the cell. So, according to the map, um, there is something behind that, that bricked-up doorway. But... We can't get to it from there. So this this room right here. And it looks like there's... Huh. And does that...
connect uh, anything? Huh. Hmm. Oh, Parasite Eve is based off of a, a novel? Huh. Okay, let's save here. It's been a... Been a whole 10 minutes. I don't want to lose all this amazing progress. So, so we're looking for a boss. We're looking for a gramophone. We're still looking for something to use these pieces of glass with. Um, and I, I think those statues aren't in my inventory anymore, which is be fantastic. Okay, so we cleared up two spots in our inventory. Good. Okay, here's this room. I don't see a gramophone in here. Is there any... hidden thing in here? No? There's, there's a door to the south of here, and there's also an X in the next room, which means I missed something, apparently. This is the hallway with the the dead guy in it. I missed a random battle, so I missed apparently. Uh this looks like more trouble than it's worth. Just a ghost. Okay. All right. Yeah, it is nice that they they automatically label the map for you. A lot of games don't do that. I know, like the the Resident Evil games, they would color code the rooms that you've been in. So that, those are probably going to be the nicest automated map systems. Well, whatever it is, it's, that ain't it apparently. Uh, map changing discs. So according to, all right, according to the manual here, though, so with the map, use up, down to change between floors. Rooms you visited will be noted with a check mark, and X notes a room where some notable event took place. Okay. Okay. So that's, that clears that up. Okay. So it's not that we're missing something. It means a cutscene happened there. Which, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure they had a good reason for putting that. <laughs> like, hey, cool. Hey, remember this room? This is where the guy shot the chandelier. Wow. Spooky ghosts in here? No? Okay, well. Spooky ghosts are always afraid of tornadoes. Without fail, so. Let's give him. Give him the tornado. It was a pretty amazing cut, you're right. Though, weirdly enough, this game. The, the FMVs in this game are worse than the pre-rendered cutscene, or the, the real-time ones. Probably because the, uh, the lip-syncing doesn't match very well. If I had to, to point at one thing, that makes it not as good. And there's no lip-syncing in the real-time ones, because there's like a dozen polygons in each character. <laughs> Alright, 
Spooky ghost. Still, oh, of course. So this this game does the Final Fantasy thing of if a uh oh jeez oh jeez okay well cool spell you got there too bad it did zero damage uh so if a if an enemy dies it's being targeted oh good now she's silent fantastic um it it cancels the action if the enemy dies before you can't uh can land it. And it doesn't automatically retarget, even though it should. This is a game from the year 2000. Manually target panels. You mean like the the squares that they're on? Like a strategy RPG would. Okay, I still don't see. Let's get let's get our HP and MP back. Predict movements. Yeah, yeah. I could see that being not amazing, but, hmm, like usually, usually in, in games that do that, you pick the action and it happens on the same turn, but with this game, there's a wind up to, to spells, so yeah, I could see that being especially annoying. But I guess like, maybe if they treated every spell as an AoE, or it, it hit multiple multiple squares at once, and that would make that less horrible. But but never give them the benefit of the doubt. If something's horrible, they'll probably do it that way. This is more trouble than it's worth. So I, I'm getting a bunch of levels on my characters, but I don't feel stronger. It's bizarre. Probably because this game does the thing a lot where an enemy will cast this epic spell at you and they will do zero or one damage. Because that's, that's kind of been how every battle's gone so far. Like, either they do zero damage to me or they kill me in one hit. Like, there, there's kind of been no in-between so far in this game. Uh, let's see. Yeah, downstairs from here. Yep, 16 damage. Or like the uh, the final boss of Legend of Dragoon. Where it, it, uh, it threw one of my characters at the ground, but somehow he dodged the ground. That was pretty amazing. Okay, it was in this room right here, I think, was the gramophone. Or not? Okay, maybe it wasn't. Yeah, there's, yep, there's that. Okay. What's this? Nope. Okay, well, there's no gramophone here. I'm trying to think of... We can only backtrack so far. Because the the floor kind of gives out at you at uh, one point here. So we can't just keep backtracking forever. This is, I assume there's no gramophone storage here. Um, yeah, and then we're back in the underground. Oh, 
So, yeah, south of here. Interesting. I don't think that there's a gramophone here. Unless we're not actually looking for a gramophone. So this is where we we need to get the acid. Put the acid into a container. Music box. Daniel's arm. It'd be nice if I could like, sort these too. That would have been amazing. Uh. Hmm. Yep, Kadelka having visions of the Illuminati. Because it, it opened up that thing behind the painting, but that was only in her, her dream, I guess. Because I, I went there and it was still closed. It wouldn't let me run there for some reason. Sure. So this is... This is Elamau. So Arm is just Megalith and Elamau is Geyser. the geyser. You get Megalith. And then stab this guy. This sword is probably due to break pretty soon. Whole damage. Hmm. So clearly we're we're over leveled for for this area here. Hmm. So I guess that that maybe implies that I whatever it is, it's not back here. Epic battles of zero damage. I guess that also probably confirms my or disproves my theory that enemies scale to you. Because clearly these enemies haven't scaled. So it's it's probably their strength is, is predetermined based off of which screen you're on. Yeah, we're still leveling, so... Huh. I don't know. Alright, how about some more vitality? She's... Let's give her some survivability, at least. Okay. So I want neither of those two things. Okay. Grand Dungeon. So I'm assuming this this fight here with the two two mummy kids. Valna and Vigna. Something green and shiny. So that's where the green key is. Sure. Give us back our dolls. Get away while you still can. And I'm assuming there that this fight is still a no go. Because usually they just they just float there. So let's see if that's what they still do. Yeah. So whatever it is we need to do here, we still can't do it. Um. Hmm. And this is still locked by the green key. Yeah. According to the map, we are... We're there. Oh, okay. So 
So there was... There was another room... Past here. Yeah, no gramophone here. So it's through this wall. No, not here. Yeah, and there, there wasn't a gramophone here either. So this is... This is backtracked all the way that we can backtrack. This is as far back as we can go. So... Hmm. Interesting. But whatever it is, it's... God, I'm almost inclined to... Reload that save, but... Whatever. I'll just run from battles. Hello, gator. Um... We, we got past the floor puzzle. I had to look it up, but I don't feel bad at all about having to look it up because it was it was complete bullshit. A solution. All the hints to that puzzle that the game gives you in-game were misleading. So, <laughs> so I don't feel bad at all about having to, to look that one up. Hello, Matt53. You missed... Uh, you missed me solving the floor puzzle. Anyway, this fight, because this is... These two do a lot of damage. Uh, solve the floor puzzle, and the floor puzzle turned out to be bullshit. Um, let's see. We put two statues into a door, but we need a third statue now. We got a cutscene of Kodelka having some sort of weird cult vision of like Illuminati and a, a sacrifice or something and and it was bizarre and let's see we got a key item that is a it looks like a gramophone disc but I don't think we've come across any gramophones uh, meant to be used with a gramophone so clearly we're working for a gramophone but I haven't seen one that I can remember um, we got another glass part, and we got a map finally. So that's uh, that's where we're at. The most BS puzzle in a game I've played so far. Oh God. Um, can you filled with acid. Okay, what are you doing? The most BS puzzle that we've done so far. I don't suppose it's in here. Oh jeez. Well, this uh, the floor puzzle is definitely up there because it's it's misleading. Um, probably something in uh, one of the two Discworld games, maybe. Though a specific example, I can't really remember. Um, hmm. Actually, is that the that statue in the back have anything to do? Uh, do you remember? No, not really. Why does it seem like the frame rate is super high in this room? Okay. Discworld or Mist? Uh, I didn't really have that much trouble with Mist, thinking back on it. Um. But for, like, for just PS Explosion, uh, it, it definitely probably would have been an adventure game. Um, and, yeah, it, was, it most likely probably would have been a, one of the Discworld games. Probably the first one. The second one I don't remember having too much of an issue with. There's, like, one or two things that took a while to, to figure out. Yeah, I think there was there was some particular thing in Discworld One that was just poorly designed. Wait, did I just one shot Legion Baby? Huh. Okay. <laughs> that that used to take all three. Of, oh, it's probably because we're on this this screen and we're still in the under level. Actually, I didn't check the. I didn't check this door over here on the way back. 
Okay, so I'm assuming this is still impassable. Yeah, okay. Alright, so whatever it is, it's not this way. Snap any more James Bond games? Likely not, because I'll be playing everything off of uh, a SD card on my PlayStation. And SD cards are a lot more expensive than, than discs are. So, unlikely. I can make a virtual one, though. Alright, so we're still looking for this... Uh, and there's a lot of stuff in this room, but nothing that looks particularly like a, a gramophone. Uh, okay, so the the red door is open. We were able to open that one. Don't I own those games? Yeah, absolutely. I have a bridge to sell you if uh, if you believe that. A revisit to Juggernaut. Yeah, because uh, that's one of the that's one of the few vods that that are lost to time. That um, is probably worth a relook. These are just so so low level. I'm not even gonna bother trying to do that. Okay. Um. <laughs> what possible progress can we even do? This is where we got the music box. And this is this is pistol bolts, I think. Uh, no. This is, that's where the puzzle hint was. The, the misleading puzzle hint. Jesus. Uh. Hmm. I think that's all we can do there. So this is where we got the... One of the statuettes. Hmm. The best, best vids and funny streams from days past. Which ones are the best? I, there's like two thousand of them. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so this is we got green, green floaty boy. Okay, I have floaty ball written down, but I have nothing next to it. So if I were a big green floaty ball, tornado, sure. Megalith leveled up. So I'm I'm pretty much having Kodelka only spam the Earth spell and other dude only spamming the the wind spell to hopefully eventually level him up. Do we one shot Slimer? We didn't. Two whole damage. <clears throat> yeah, there's a YouTube chat. I the people in YouTube chat, the majority of the chat for my stream is on my Discord. And uh, in order to get to that, you have to go to my website here. Here's my website. And then here is where the Discord server invite is, right here. On the right side of my website. And uh, it's in the stream chat channel on my Discord is where the where that is, and uh, the site is purrypurry.live is the website. So that's uh, that's where all that is. Uh, 
Sure. Sure, sure. Oh man, we finally got some more armor. <laughs> finally. Uh, okay. Like the the loot in this game is apparently randomized, and it just give me a whole lot of nothing. You don't have a Discord. Well, okay. No, I'm not. I'm not dropping YouTube chat anytime soon. But it's just, it is annoying to me having to have two chats open, but. It's fine. That's why I have two chats. Uh, so... Sure, this doesn't hurt any of her stats. And gives her some more pie, so... Sure. So Kadelka's just got so much MP. <laughs> Let's see it. So spells still only cost... Uh, 8 MP to, ca to, to cast. And... She has over 400 now. Like... This game is bizarre. Bizarre in how its its leveling works. And it's not like we get more spells later on. Like, they, they level up, but... Sure. Okay. Still not seeing... Unless, like, the, the gramophone's, like, hidden off-screen or something. Which would be... Pretty messed up of them to do. So this is where I got... One of the... Hmm. Hmm. Uh... So yeah, there's two exits to this room. And then nothing else. Huh. The Dreamcast the meme game was Seventh Cross Evolution. One of the finest games on the Dreamcast. Okay. Oh, I, I never noticed that uh, that they they put that guy up there after the after the fight. Um. Wasn't there a like a box you could climb up or something? Again, I I don't like how this game handles interacting and picking up with items because you have to be standing like literally actually on it. Uh, yeah, there was this. Okay, is this does this do anything now? I don't think we've been here in a while. It, oh. This What? Huh. Okay. This is the beginning of the game. This is the the very beginning of the game. This is the the first um, temporary save point. Okay, so they do let you back backtrack all the way to the beginning. Okay, and maybe in the the caretaker. Okay, I gotta remember. Okay. Second floor. 
So we have to to go down the staircase. So we need to. There is an event. Yeah, the 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 very beginning of the game is the the room north of us. So if we go south. So through here. And there should be a staircase or yeah, so there's that. And then down here. So this is where the caretaker's room was that we can now open with the red key. This is this is I think the screen where we fought the the thing that one shot us at the beginning of the game. Uh, this is what we're fighting though. Okay. Alright, so the first room on the left should be the caretaker's room. Lock the red key, we have the red key. You don't need it anymore, you throw away the red key. Good. Love it when survival horror games do that. Okay. See anything particularly useful? There's something on the table there. Oh, something here. Okay. Ah, that probably goes in that um, that mural in the the library. That menu doesn't wrap around for some reason. What? 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 Where's the badge? Where? Did I not pick up the badge? Oh, it must be. Huh. Did I? Okay, that wasn't a. Weird. Okay. Oh, that must be the thing to open the door. Okay. Dragon statue. So now we can... Brass object art. Large gouges. So weird that the... Um, the goat statue didn't say anything about having scratches on it. But the other two do. Okay. Burning. Or oops, there's something over here. Okay. Or bullets. No. Lame. Yeah. A sinking ship. Okay. There's the... that must be the doll that we need. Hey, what's this? The Princess Alice? Well, she was a pleasure boat that went down in a terrible accident in the Thames. This one too. And this one. <laughs> What's going on? Uh... They're all the Princess Alice.
Hey, Cyrus. Good morning. Uh, okay. So, something to do with the sinking of the Princess Anne. Eh? Sure, we'll take that. Anything else here? Previously on Kodelka. Uh, is this a doll? Okay, this is Valna's doll. So there's also Vigna. Is the so this is this is for one of the the spooky ghosts. All right, we're tossing items again. Why don't plot items have their own separate inventory? Highly unlikely to use any of the, the ranged weapons. I'll keep the pistol stuff because we got that special pistol thing, but. And it says we have one mask. Huh. Well. Maybe that means we can use it in battle? Like we have to, we have to put on our robe and wizard hat during a fight or something. Okay, well that's uh, there's one of those things. Uh, okay. Oh. Assuming that's all we can do here. So is this room connected to? Interesting. So the the little storage room I don't think was even on the map prior to us going in it. So that's uh, that's new. Uh, still trying to think if we've come across a gramophone. Hmm. Game and it's random battles. Like I'm clearly oh, oh geez. All right. This is this is a battle worth having, I think. All right. If if fire doesn't do bonus damage against these, then then throw this game in the garbage. All right. Get that table to business. There we go. We got our 69. All right. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> All right. And it silenced him, but that's okay, because this is Stabby Band. Good. We got a 420 and a 69 in the damage today. Today was a good day of Kadelka. Oh, God. Not Clock Tower. There we go, okay. If he's doing a thousand damage, then that means it's definitely definitely weak to fire. So this is probably gonna do like three thousand. Close enough. Okay. Wait, I, I have to throw away items still? You can only hold 10 breads, apparently. That. So some things you can hold 99 of, but only 10 breads, because let's not, let's not be silly here. Well, how about just the potions? 
Did I use up my other potions? That must be why. Okay. So the, the problem wasn't bread, it was the potions. And those potions are pretty useful. Because they, they heal for 500. Let's give six cheeses. The whiskey is actually going to be useful. This water hammer is like from the beginning of the game. So let's just get rid of that thing. Replace it with bread. Okay. Alright, I don't know if we interacted with this. Nope. Nope. Okay, I don't see anything else noteworthy here. Okay. So there's a possibility of a gramophone being here. This was like the big kitchen, I want to say. Where they had the cutscene of the guy, the guy barfing. But I don't know why there'd be a gramophone here. Yeah. Okay. So I think our our next likely progress area is probably going to be the spooky ghost kids in the in the basement. Apparently I haven't been through one of these doors. According to the map. Uh yeah, we haven't been to this room yet. I wonder if this was uh this was closed off by supernatural force or something when we came through here last. Okay. Maybe this is a shortcut in the lower area. Come on, Godaka. Come on. What? There is it back here? Oh. <laughs> sure. Alright. Apparently we were supposed to go to this area before, but... Like coming from below, underground. I think we've already been in that room. This was the... Uh... Just those those green corridors. <laughs> so yeah. Apparently this is just a room we missed before and all it had was was that in it. Okay. Actually, can we do anything with this? Nope. Okay. Alright. And I still don't see a gramophone here. Okay, so I think we're heading back to... Heading back to the underground, I guess. Oh, come on. Come on. Man. Okay, we... We've been here before. This is where we got an axe, I want to say. And this goes out into the main courtyard. Oh no, herb guard. Okay. Is this a uh, gramophone? Might have been a weird vertical gramophone. And it's not letting me get my HP and MP back. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now we're we're forward tracking, I guess. Unless there was Hmm. I'm still thinking that there's 
there's maybe some sort of progression thing in one of the earlier rooms that now that we can return to those, there might be something. That would have been up the stairs here. Hmm. Uh oh, this guy. We're not messing around with this guy. This is one of the few enemies that is smart enough to just bring a gun. Bring a gun to the gunfight. south of here so are there any rooms that we haven't been in so just looking on the north end of the map here there's clearly rooms that we haven't been in here but I'm not sure we can access that yet yeah it looks like we have to get there from that screen and we have to get through the blue door to get to those and that's probably how we also get to the upper parts. Okay, so that's that part I won't worry about for now. Uh, we still haven't been able to get to this yet, but I'm not so sure about that one either. Uh, okay, so if we're heading back to the underground part. We have to go this way. Through here. This should take us to the... No. I took a wrong turn some more. Okay. Wrong turn. This way. Yep. Spooky outside. Spooky candles. Yeah, it's through here. Uh, I don't think I can take that ladder up. Maybe I can? I think this is where the game started, though. Actually, is there a... a gramophone in here? I don't see one. Okay. here and then it is the upper left I believe and the beginning of the game was over here yeah so this is this is the very first screen in the game and it's just a storeroom so nothing nothing exciting over here it seems like the stables, I guess. No sense in fighting this, because it's like, like, like no XP. It'll take like five minutes. Disc 2 has been a lot longer than disc 1 so far. 
Like, I thought this... At the rate that disc one took, like, this game probably would have been 10 hours total, but now I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not so good. Okay, so... The next likely progression point is the spooky ghost kids. who are underground, which was back this way. And here we'll get our HP and MP back for presumably the boss fight. Hopefully that they only need that one doll, because if, if there's two dolls, then... Man, hell if I know where that second doll is. I'm hoping there's only one doll and they can just share. So they, can, they can cut it in half and each have half a doll. That's how it works. Okay, this way. Over this way. Yep, they're lucky enough to get one doll. Uh, okay. This way. And then green room. So this must be the, the room that we saw from the well. I'm not sure they... Why they even needed to show that. Like, hey, there's something green down there. But, sure. Unless it's a different room. An even greener room than this one. Okay. So, and actually, let's... Let's use a temporary save here. I'm sure there's a reason why they they gave you two back to back. Okay, so, we got a doll. I don't think we examined it yet. Alright, Valna's doll. Antique bisque doll with somewhat melancholy look on its face. Words to my dear daughter Valna are written on the bottom of one of its shoes. How can you see the bottom of the shoe if it's... If it's on the, the Smash Brothers thing? Come on, game. Uh, and then we've already looked at the mask. Oh, there's the dragon statue. Maybe the, the other dolls is behind the, the dragon statue door. I forgot about that thing. Okay, so this is all the same. Yep, they're in the way. Pull it away, yep. Try to speak, yep. Give us back our dolls. Dolls plural with an S. So that... I think... That implies that they each have dolls. Dang it. Unless it's one of the, the things where you could use it in the battle. Because they're one target in the battle. Okay, and the mask is also not usable in the battle. Okay. So the, the next progression thing then is using the dragon statue in the door uh yeah all the way back to the crest door yep all right well, let's do it i kind of suspected this would have been the case that that we need two dolls because there's two npcs oh man three arms Another fight that is probably going to be way too long to be worth it. Yeah, place your bets how many fights we're getting between right now and when we get to that door. I'm guessing five. Five fights that I'm just going to run from. So we're starting at zero, because I'm not counting that one. 
Okay. Well, th three might be correct, the way things are going. <laughs> we're still at zero, and we're, like, halfway there. Okay, so it was... Uh, up the stairs and yeah up the stairs and then it was the I believe it was this room right there so we gotta or I don't know it's through here though uh fear effect 2 and peace explosion yep it is it is eligible to appear in the polls. Though not that there's there's a poll. I'm currently just doing straight up random for uh, for picking games for now. The uh, the winner of the last poll we ever held was uh, uh, Monster Rancher Two. So that'll be the game after uh, after this one. That guy's a pink hat now. Interesting. Okay, and it was... Alright, here's one battle. Finally up to one. Yeah, we have not done Fear Effect 2 yet. We've only done one. And apparently you can't, uh, you can't cheese out two, from what I've heard. Because if you remember from the Fear Effect 1 playthrough, I discovered, like, an hour or so in that you could just hold down the roll button and roll everywhere and enemies couldn't hit you. If you just constantly rolled and it was amazing. That made that game a lot easier. <laughs> Except boss fights. You still have to, to do boss fights. It's not here. But everything but boss fights, you could just hold down that roll button and cheese out the, the whole game. So I don't think we can... We got that badge from the... The desk of the caretakers? I kind of want to get up on this thing and, and check and see if there's... If that changed anything. Large relief, missing a piece, yeah. Yeah, huh. That's so weird that they would just put a... A fire badge in the desk of the caretakers. Like, maybe that means one of the, the fights coming up uh, is against something that's going to be casting fire all the time, and it's the only way you can beat the fight, maybe? Okay, it was this door. Yeah, just right for a small statue. Okay, all right. So yeah, it was it was one, <laughs> one fight from there to here. Sure. Okay. Progress. Something's not okay. That always means that there's a boss fight. Every single time, that means there's a boss fight. We're gonna. It's been seven minutes. We're gonna take that quick save that's here. Oh, dang it, it's 
Okay, was there one... One in the printing press room off to the side? There we go, okay. All right. Here... So what does that, uh, so this fire badge, so reflects for, reflect it? So this, the other fire badge we have is makes you only weak to water. And I have it equipped on somebody apparently. <laughs> uh, and it reflects fire. Okay, so. I might as well Okay, we'll we'll give you the other fire badge. And then Sure that gives him a bunch of spell points, but he doesn't need them, so we'll not bother with that, I guess. Okay. All right, let's do it. Come on, Kadoka. Like, they, they made the hitboxes for these doors way too small. Okay, something's not right. Oh, that's... Yeah, so this is this is a save point room. That's the That's got to be the... The holy water font there. Yep. Okay. And then there's a door that was... That wouldn't open somewhere. I forgot where, but... Okay. Oh man. All right. All right we're gonna fortify his vitality. Hopefully, he can just continue to tank. the boss here. Alright. Okay. That's effective at least. Alright. Yeah, there's a lot of really messed up creature designs in this game. But it's fitting for a horror game. They're they're suitably detailed and, and horror-esque, so that means they did a good job. Alright, take this. Like, I think... Oh, good, she's silenced. want to keep, keep boss monster far away from her as possible and then to cure her silence I don't think this this would have ever scared somebody when it came out. Like I don't know. Personally, I don't I don't feel something like that like a, a gory guts monster to be scary per se other than like hey, it's all creepy. But, but to each their own, I guess. Uh Okay, let's just give it the old megalith. Like it's like to me personally, um, stuff like horror fiction, like written horror stuff, I just, I don't understand at all. Ooh, 
zero. Like, uh, like Clyde Barker short stories or something. I kind of don't see the point of horror short stories. Maybe it, it held more of a purpose prior to film, I suppose. But, but I don't know. I, I don't see a place for, for written horror fiction. So he leveled up his sword skill, so he should be able to slash twice with it now. Okay. And now the sword's probably gonna break, because that's how the sword goes. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can see that. If you if you have an extremely active imagination or or stuff like that. Then, then yeah, I could see. That. I could see that. Typically, whenever I'm I'm reading a book, though, I'm not imagining things as it goes. So I just I read it all literally. I guess is how I approach uh, approach fiction. But but yeah, okay. I could see if if, if you're imagining along to the book. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense to me now. Because I'm, uh, uh, like, before I go to bed, I'm, I'm listening to audiobooks now just to try and get to sleep a bit easier. Uh, that was an easy boss fight. I may or may not be over leveled here. Uh and I am I'm listening to the audiobook of uh uh the Wheel of Time books. And those are like the the unabridged versions are like thirty hours long for each book. So I am uh I'm a few hours into book two. Because I've pretty much forgotten what happened in those books. Because the last time I read them was uh Oh god, like twenty years ago. And I, I take still a similar approach of I'm not imagining what's happening. I'm just letting it, just listening to words. Maybe I'm just weird like that. Um, how does Kadelka still not have... Oh my god, this... Is my inventory going to be full again? We got a crown. Okay. All right. Give me that suit. Book eight or nine? Yeah. I uh, um. Back when I was reading them, I got to like book five or so, and I had like books six, seven, and maybe eight, but I just, I just didn't read beyond five because I think I was, I was fantasied out at that point. Which is why I'm I'm going through the series again. Maybe, <laughs> maybe 20 years is enough uh, enough of a difference to make me enjoy them more. Okay. All right, I'm gonna step away for uh, a couple minutes here. So I'm gonna pause this, and we'll uh, we'll continue with more Kodelka after a couple minutes. So stay tuned for that.
Okay. All right. All right. So. Uh, let's see, Matt 53. Uh, the book that I'm reading is the second book in the Wheel of Time series. I, I think it's called The Great Hunt. There's like 11 of them in the series. Usual plant right going in the cracks. Oh, it's another cutscene where they tell you what happens. Okay. This one's Milius and Lambsbrick and Michael Mayer and Kunras Ampetheatrum Sapienti Eterni. What a collection of books. May I ask you something? What are all these? <laughs> They're books. books on mysticism and alchemy, ancient science. It's enticing, really. It's all about making gold from lead. It's just a ruse peddled by power-hungry tricksters blinded by greed. But in amongst the trash, there are some valuable works illustrating basic useful experiments for predicting the laws of nature. Predicting a time when all men will be treated equally. God's will. No room for this argument nowadays. James. Hermeticism, you... Kabbalah, meaningless. Why, why is it not here? What? Where else can it be? Are you looking for something? I don't understand. I don't understand. You don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> what are you grumbling about? You're acting really strange. Just cut the charade and tell us what's going on. I do not like this. We all have our reasons. Let's not delve into each other's personal affairs. I am not bound to please thee with my answers. Do all men kill the things they do not love? Hate any man, the thing he would not kill? And I thought all outlaws read just simple, stupid poets. You read Shakespeare. You're smarter than you look. That makes two of us. What does that have to do with the plant? Okay. Uh, uh, plant unrelated, apparently. Sure? Wait, so this room is only a save room? Oh, I... Uh, uh. What did we... So we... We got the crown from here. I still haven't found the statue that this goes on. Like, uh, It seems like half of my inventory is key items that haven't been used yet on anything. Like, is it... Is it this statue? Uh... Doesn't even let me interact with it. Hmm. There, yeah, there's usual plant. A faint pulse, so maybe we're missing a key item to interact with that. Doesn't even look like there's. Okay, so. So looking at this, it looks like our next point of attack is is that, because we've been in the room next to it, but we haven't been in that triangle-shaped room yet. Um, so we have to go back into the printing press room. Oh, 
Oh yeah, there was there was a door that said it was mysteriously held shut by by a force, and that that must be this through here. Yeah, it was it was back here, and then this door. Yeah, okay, so this is all new. Triangular hallway, okay, just like it says. Well, that's that's just a gate and not sure. Might as well attempt save here. Don't want to lose all that incredible progress I made. Okay. So, let's see. So going straight will send us... Why is that checkmarked now? What? So g Huh. This. My brain hurts. It's locked and won't open. Okay, well that... That settles that, I guess. And there's no items that I can see. And of course... Yeah, maybe it counts as one big room, but it says it's a triangular room. Alright. That is... Really fat crow, it looks like. Escape. Leave that bird alone. Alright. Because I, I still suspect that I'm overleveled, because we, we've done a lot of backtracking and then forward tracking and then backtracking again. Reach left nave. Okay, if there's any place where we're going to be using... Right, I'm not going to bother saving here. If there's any place that we're going to be using some stained glass, it would be here. And this is probably more stained glass, I'm guessing. Uh, okay. Oh my god. Oh, she, she puts her... <laughs> she strikes a pose if you can't pick up something. She is just as frustrated with this game's bullshit as I am. Uh, I guess I could throw out that other fire badge, because this thing is definitely useless. I am really considering getting rid of the rifle, um, but this this 2x4 we probably don't need. Like, I don't even have that many weapons looking at my weapon list, like... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We have thirteen... Thirteen plot items in our inventory right now. And I'm pretty sure we have like a thirty or forty item inventory limit. So... Like, a third of our inventory is taken up by, by plot stuff. Okay, well at least we know where that relief face thing is. Throwing open, designed to open using a trick man. God. Okay, so maybe something to do with this, the light casting? It's not letting me interact with it, so... What about this door? Stained glass. Okay, stained glass room. Here we go. We can finally use up those three pieces of stained glass. Okay. We have three or four of them, so we don't have five. Okay. 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 And then we need one more. Yep. Of course. Uh... Maybe it's just on the ground over here. That would be too easy. Well, at least we got four inventory slots opened up, if anything. Yep. Okay, and that's the only thing in this room. Alright, so that's, that's that then. So, I guess our next... Our next forward progress 
point is uh piece is missing, yep. So the only way forward is that mural now, I guess. Because we still need another doll. We still need one more piece of stained glass. So is uh rifle. Oh no, bogan. Nope. This way. And then up here. All right. He's missing in the middle. He wants you. Okay, so this time they do ask you if you want to use it. So this probably implies that there's a fight that happens here. Can I move? Maybe that opened up the... So this was the the Were Angels something. Simple melody with only four notes. Him to the angels. Okay. So there's there's markings on the floor here. Um Oh no. So it was So it was one, two, three, interesting. All right, so we need to we need to leave the room and come back, and then we gotta <laughs> gotta do a sound puzzle here. Okay, it's not that one. Okay, so that's that's the first one. So I think it's it's this. This. Okay. <laughs> Music box is very how convenient. Okay. I think we're we're maybe in the clock tower now, I'm guessing. All right, well. <laughs> Very convenient. Yep, just toss out that. What? What is that? She mumbling about? <gasps> Is that just a mummy? Cross your fingers. That was disappointing. Holy Savior! The secret of the Fomors from the bottom of the sea. Emigre! Kodelka. Uh, is that the end of disc two, I'm guessing? 
Probably is, considering this is a long load. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the you cookie. say the immigrate document? What do you know about the immigrate document? Where is it? Answer me! Immigrate document? Is that what you've been looking for? Hey, you crotchety old fart! I am sick of this! You don't want to talk? Fine. I'll slit your holy throat and leave your body for the rats! Edward? I have no choice. Here it is. I'm on instructions direct from the Vatican. There is a manuscript. It's said to be somewhere in the building. And that manuscript is? Right. It's called the Immigrate Document. Is it very important? For hundreds of years, it was kept deep inside the Vatican Library. No one was allowed to read it. In fact, many people thought it didn't even exist. That's weird. So why is it here now? Somebody stole it. Stolen? From the Vatican? Right. No way. Not many people could steal a thing like that from the Vatican. You really have to know the place, or have enough money. According to our secret investigation, however, the wealthy gentleman who purchased this monastery bribed someone within the Vatican to steal the immigrate document for him. Wealthy gentleman? Yes. Patrick Hayworth. My friend. My friend Tom. But it's not like it was priceless art or something. Why would he be interested in a thing like that? For years, Patrick has dabbled in mysticism and alchemy. He's on the brink of crossing the line, playing God. Playing God? Creating life, Edward. It's thought that the ancient druids forbidden secrets on eternal life and resurrecting the dead are contained in the immigrate document. I can't believe that. Of course, it's just silly superstition. That's why I'm here, to try to convince Patrick to drop his dangerous experiments and return the immigrate document to the Vatican. Wow. You'd never guess that a lunatic like that was living here by looking at the place. According to the caretakers, he lives in the building next to the temple. They said that? Yes, they're terrified. With all the crazy things going on around here now, they haven't even seen Patrick, yet they feel indebted to him. They've asked me here to see if I can save him. So that's your story? I don't know. One more mystery that needs unraveling. Okay. Sure. No, oh, we got 60 FPS room here. Some of the rooms are 60 FPS, and I'm not sure why. Some of them are 30, though. Weird. Okay. Well, we can't... We can't talk to... The zombie guy again. Eh? Well, now we can... We can solve the stained glass puzzle. Oh, that was it for... That room? Okay. There happened to be a doll in here. There's a random battle in here, though. This is a, a burlap sack with legs. Sure. Man, that thing can move. Okay. I don't want to mess with that thing. Okay. 
All right, back to the church area then. Which seems familiar. Yep, you know where where Yusuzuki got his inspiration from. Okay, so it was through here and then through the right door of here. Uh, I'll make sure to temporary save when we, or when we enter the church. I'm assuming this is still locked and it's not. Okay. One of those mysterious doors that's locked until you do one minor thing and then it unlocks itself. Because this game has definitely done that. So the room on the left is the stained glass puzzle room, which we should be able to solve now. Okay. okay. Oh. The door unlocks, okay. So, oh yeah, it, it, it seems the majority... Ah, okay. I gotta write these down. They must be the key to the lock. Okay, well let's take a look at this again. All right, so we got from top to bottom, we've got that one, we've got this one, We've got something like that. We've got tall S. And then we've got P. Sure. And that's probably the order they need to be in. Yeah, it is nice that they they call out like, "Hey, remember this thing?" Cuz I probably would have forgotten about that thing actually. <laughs> Thanks, Kodelka. I probably would have forgotten all about that safe. And I'm almost inclined to backtrack to it cuz that's probably where that other doll is. But let's just have a look see what's here. Okay, the nave first floor. Okay, so the that safe with the Greek letters was in the one room that we couldn't it it was by the the bricked up it was by the bricked up hallway door so I was on the second floor of the library um, next to the clock tower and it was kind of in the, the corner of the room. Uh, so it was through here. Yeah, okay, so it was, it was through here and then up the stairs. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> Cameras. Okay, so it was up the stairs from... Man. Most survival horror games don't do this, but this is still better than... Than... God, what was it? It wasn't Countdown Vampires. It was... Uh... The one set on Mars. I think I've I burned it from my memory because that one was the worst survival horror in PS Explosion so far. Uh, yeah, that was a very early one. 
Well, Countdown Vampires was even earlier, but... Uh... Yeah, Martian Gothic. Yep. Yep. Martian Gothic. What a video game that one was. Oh boy. Okay, so here's where the safe was. It's locked. letters and a red box okay <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> okay uh Sophia Lota we'll pick up sure we went through all that to get that so we might as well okay Thing. cool puzzle Kodelka and it's not letting me interact with it again she's clearly looking at it below Okay. All right. Uh, Sophia's letter. Letter number one. My dearest daughter, Charlotte. As I sit in silence, struggling to write this letter to you in English, I sense the arrival of winter is near at Arden Castle. I feel it makes me a bad mother since I'm unable to make you happy. I cannot lament enough how my selfish affairs entangled so many people, including you, my dear, who were sent to Wales to encounter many sorrowful experiences. I probably will never see you again, nor your brother, nor your sister again. Okay. One thing that will not change is that you are my beloved daughter. You are the daughter of the man whom I loved from the bottom of my heart, Philip Christopher, with two first names. I'm sure you must resemble him greatly. You were blessed when you were born, and I'm still alive as a testament to that fact. I often wonder what the color of your eyes is and how it feels to run my hands through your hair. Can't help but to dream about the day I meet you, although deep down inside I know that day will never come. You might be far away in distance, so always be together in your heart. Hear yourself, your mother, Sophia de Lota. Letter two. Oh god, how many of these are there? Five summers have passed, yeah, uh, twenty letters now. Okay. Uh it's, okay, so this is just a big old lore dump in a bunch of letters. Your father is the son of Count von Konsmark. Uh, I'm the daughter of a duke, okay. Uh, marry and be queen. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay, I don't see anything here that, that helps with the puzzles, I suppose. Raspberry cake, your beautiful dress, golden hair ornament and brooch. Okay. Yeah, a queen to account? Sure. <laughs> Trophy. <laughs> uh, pay for well being, trying to implement of you. Yeah. And that's it? That's all the letters. So. Uh, maybe, maybe the the only thing of importance here is this bit, with the 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 dress with the hair ornament and brooch. Maybe that's maybe that's important for some sort of puzzle. But besides that, I I don't see what the point of those is. Okay, well, sure. And then we also got the crown. Wait. No, we we got a red box and then the letters. Right? Did did we like not have enough inventory space for it? Like do I need to throw out something? Well, let's let's get rid of this thing. Like maybe that's why she's uh she's still looking at it. 
What? Okay, maybe I gotta leave the room and come back. So I, I have inventory space now. So besides the letters, we didn't, we didn't get anything important from that. And it's uh. Okay, and she isn't looking at it anymore. So. I am. I'm really hoping we didn't like soft lock or something, but. Okay, sure. All right, so now we're heading back to the church, even though what we just did accomplished pretty much nothing, as far as I know. But okay. Back to the church, which is... We gotta go back to the... Printing press room. Which is... Down the stairs. Uh... Through the side door. Still mad about that printing press thing. Where it said that this printing press is unusable, and then suddenly it is, and then the wall behind the other one breaks. Okay, so there's a temporary save point here at the start of church. We'll save here, even though we. We didn't really accomplish much other than the game solving a puzzle for us. And then some some lore. I don't think strictly required, but maybe it was a plot a plot trigger for something, who knows. Okay. So what we got here. Alright, another small staircase that uh doesn't do much for us. Here? No. Eh? Huh. Okay. So this this must be the way to the courtyard. Let me move in behind me, okay? Maybe that's the the plant thing that he was talking about in that that bookshelf cutscene a while back. It looked like there was there's a plant growing at the the altar. Alright, this fight is absolutely not worth doing. Oh come on. Come on, game. Said there's something moving behind us.
Delka. Okay. Okay. It looks like a church. Well, we're we're in a church. The usual plant rocks you. Okay, is this a boss fight? No. Well. Okay. So now maybe I can leave through the the other way. Okay. There's also this over there, but there's, there isn't like a door that goes to it. So, hmm. <laughs> I don't suppose there's anything over here. No. It's hard to tell what stairs and what's like, what's just a wall or a rope. What the? What's that bell? Just the passing of another day. Oh no! Today's All Saints Day! <laughs> uh. The spiritual energy is coming together. What power! It's like... Monster. What? What's happening? This can't be. Why can't they run that fast when I'm moving them? No! Kudalka! This is this is a one on one fight, isn't it? Uh oh. Okay. Alright. be a plot fight where you're supposed to lose maybe yeah okay so usually all the fights that say miss are fights where you're supposed to all right what if we escape Can we escape okay Okay, so we're we're outside the church. All right, and this explains why they they have the portrait things in the same icon. I was actually wondering about that. Like, what's the point of having the portraits there? That is why. Okay. I guess we're just in that small area. Yeah, okay, so we're there. Interesting. Ah, okay. This is what I suspected. All right, let me, let me change the discs on the old PSIO here, which is Eject the SD card and put it back in. Okay. <laughs> Very quick. This change. Okay. We're on. We're 
we're on disc three now. Okay. This is past the, the disc transition. Normally, I wouldn't save here, but this is a proper disc three save, so we'll, we'll save there. Okay. Um, see a door under the water. I can't do anything about it for now. Okay, good. Take that. So you gotta turn off that water somehow, I guess. Oh, is this a statue that we can put things on? Or is this a boss fight statue? Statue of a woman, and it's got the... Sure. Okay. All right. Well, we can finally get rid of those statue parts, at least. This is going to be like five free inventory slots freed up. Oh, sick. All right. Free, uh, free save point. for the other statues, I guess. I'm really hoping there's no uh, random battles in this section. Lock? I can't do anything. Huh? Like, how are you... How are you supposed to be able to tell... There goes that idea. It's really hard to tell where all the screen transitions are here, because they're just in random places. So this is one-legged hopping zombie. Sure. Some fire probably would have done the trick there, but... Eh. The combat hasn't really been an issue for a while, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Hey, the Sacknoth! It's, uh... You want to take Sacknoth? Sure. Appears to be held in place. Okay. Well, guess we're not taking that yet. And then she does a little stompy foot animation. Just like if you don't have enough room in your inventory. I want to look at the statue to the left of the screen here. Is this, uh... Apparently not. Alright, have we been up here? Well, we can't go up there, apparently. But there is something here, it looks like. Okay. And a little and it looks like there's something else right. Yeah, these camera angles, like, <laughs> like I don't know if it if it looks like I'm having trouble trying to navigate these, but but I am, I absolutely am. So we've already already been to that one. Okay, and now it's reversed, so this way. Yeah. 
this, this way. Patrick's okay, Patrick's corpus. Two women, okay. Nicholas, sure. So we still have the ring, and we have the uh something else. Yeah, we have earrings and the ring. So there's still at least two more statues, it looks like. So before I even try going into into Daniel's, I want to find the other statues. Because I have a feeling that probably unlocks the Sakna. Okay, this is probably a ring. Yeah. Oh, it's a brace. Wait. Okay. That's a bracelet, but okay. Sure. Yeah, they, like the, um, the icon's earrings, I think, was from, like, the very beginning of the game. Like, when we got the first save point was when we got those. And those have just been taking up space in our inventory since, like, the first 30 minutes of the game. Sure. One more statue somewhere. I'm hoping it's right over here. Yep, okay. And then that should unlock Saknoth. Statue of a Alright, well there's there's statue butt in the frame. Hopefully I don't have to make note of the, uh, the things at the base of the statue, because they do all have markings, but I'm going to assume that just like all the other puzzles, the game is going to solve it for me. probably use for something important later. Alright, so I'm guessing the Sacknoth can probably be taken from the, the pedestal now. So then once we get that... Oh, that... That opened that door now, okay. I want to check the Sacknoth first, though. Oh, that dried up the fountain, too? Okay. Well, we got the... Okay. I'm glad I checked that, but... Is that a... Given to Kodelka when she's in by a gypsy. Well, why was that in the fountain? But okay. And it says it it was for her, so maybe this thing Okay, it gives her a bunch of luck. So sure. Let's I'm still not sold on the, the luck attribute in this game, but sure, let's give it a go. Should be over here and then to the right. Uh, down here. 
All right, give me the sack moth. No. Give me a, a workable camera angle. All right, give me a sack moth. Yes. Held in place. Okay. So we still can't take it. All right. So next step is to go to Dude's house, which was. Back this way. It was up from here, I think. Oh, okay, clearly not. Okay, game. I, uh... Sure. Is it left of this screen? So there was, so there's the door behind the fountain, and then there was also that the other guy's house was over here. Yeah, Patrick's corpse. Okay, so we haven't we haven't even been in here yet. But I think I want to check out this before going in that uh, the thing in the center of the courtyard. looks like a door, but this also looks like a door. Locked from the other side, can't be opened from here. Okay. That answers that question. Okay. Okay. We get our party members back when we go through there. I have a feeling that uh, the Sackmouth Sword is probably going to be needed for endgame stuff. Sackmouth is the name of the, the developers of this game also, by the way. I feel I should point out it's the, uh, the Japanese studio that uh, made this. So they're, they're pulling a FromSoft and they're They're making the the OP sword is a recurring element in uh, their RPG series. Okay. All right. This is where we keep our guillotine. Okay. Okay, there's a ladder down. Oh, dried spots of blood here and there. Uh, it's it's like all over the place. Okay, it's gonna be a bunch of spooky skulls down here. Okay, and there's blood stains everywhere here, as opposed to no. We can't handle that many passengers! The sky is getting dark! The draft! The draft! We're sinking! Bessie! Bessie! The meat is burning! It's burning! No! It's not working! No! Hey! Hey! Where are you going? Where are you going? Hey, you! Well, no! We're sinking! Wait! My, my boat! My boat! Are you awake? 
sake. These ruffians. You harlot. Stumpet. Have you no shame? Oh, if only Elaine had been saved, we wouldn't be in this mess. Elaine? Ah, uh, yes. She was merciful. She was benevolent. She believed me, and she was fond of my paintings. Your paintings? The sun It wasn't all... my fault! All of a sudden, there was a coal ship out of nowhere. It was dark. What could we do? It sank so fast. I was faultless. Elaine. Poor, poor Elaine. If only I'd stayed with her. Hey, you! You! Hey! How's that? Just a lamp? You won't make you just a lamp? You're crazy! Shut up! <laughs> Honey, let's stop this now. It's time to stop. It's okay. It's over. I'm sorry. My husband, a long time ago, he was the captain of a big pleasure boat. It was a gorgeous boat. He was so proud of it. But then there was the accident. So many people died. Everyone blamed my husband. It was so difficult for him. He started drinking heavily. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? No matter how much you drink, you can't forget such a tragedy. But he met Elaine. She believed he was innocent. She helped him carry on. This Elaine, she's dead? Yes. Why is it that good people seem to die so early? What a waste. While Elaine's husband Patrick was traveling, a robber broke into their house. My husband has always said, if only I had been there for her. We should stop this conversation now. <laughs> My husband is waiting. He can be so impatient, you know? Hey, free shotgun and a rifle. Sure. Something about her body that bothers you. Something blue. Okay, so we got the blue key. Nice. This, uh... I like to, to point out that this low angle here... This low angle here... You can you can see something a little different from the usual camera angles. All right. That's hot. If they modeled all that. Okay, so so now what? Oh, there's just happens to be bullets over here, too. How nice of her. Oh, that's piss her. Name. Uh... Yeah, why not both? Okay, so now we're back here again. <laughs> so, so after all that, I, I think those were the caretakers. Right? Are those the, the caretakers? Oh, this is this is that door in the underground that we couldn't get through. Um, oh, that's a skull. Okay, I was wondering, like, what the hell is that? Yeah, that's a skull. Okay, maybe we can push this door open now. Now that we're on the other side, we can unlock it and push it open. Oh boy, this game is a trip.
Okay, so we got another item on the ground. Okay, can this be opened? Is this a one-way door now? Oh. Kudoka! Edward! Kudoka! I'm over here! Where are you? I'm over here! Oh, thank God. I was so worried. Are you okay? Are you hurt? No. I'm okay. How about you? I almost got creamed by that monster. Luckily, I went down the side hallway. Walls caved in. We can't get back to the sanctuary. I figured if you'd escaped from the garden, you'd be here. Thank God I took the underpass. Uh, How did... It's no use. What? This door won't open. Damn it! Is we... there another way out? Aren't you underneath the arbor? There is. There is another door across from the cathedral. The cathedral, that's right. There's got to be another way out. A secret passage or something. Secret passage? Okay, let's split up. Kadelka, start from that door. We'll go along the wall. Find a place to regroup, clear? Got it. Kadelka. Yeah? Don't get killed. <laughs> Same to you. Oh, you. Okay. So we're looking for a secret passage, and there must be one. Because, of course, meet him in the library, okay? Well, certainly there must be a secret passage and not this enormous obvious door that's right in front of us. No, there must be a secret passage. So... Pick this door, I guess? Really hoping I don't have to do any actual boss fights with only Kabelka. Because she does not have much HP. <laughs> oh god. Just as I say that. Okay, there's a oh jeez. Oh jeez. Just everything about this thing, I do not like. So let's, let's give it the Mega Lift. Give it a Mega Lift right to the bulge. Oh, okay, maybe this is a run fight. I can't escape. Maybe this is a fight you're supposed to lose? This does like 999, okay. Can't escape. I have a feeling that means you you can't run from this. Hey, Megalith is level two now. Okay. Oh dang! Oh, that's a miss too. That's that's an earth spell. So maybe you're supposed to equip like something that helps the earth. So if he's casting earth at me and Megalith is is not connecting, then I think it's air is what counters earth. So maybe I was just casting the wrong spell at him.
There we go. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. stance. Oh, okay, 437, so I I can survive another physical attack. Okay, shotgun. Sure, fine. Probably never gonna use it, but I think we got it. Gotta find the hot water. Okay, so we unlocked another save point. Good. All right, so that'll that'll be today's Kodelka progress. So we, I think we made a decent amount of progress. We finally made it to disc three. So we're still looking for looking for the doll. Uh, we're looking for the doll. We're looking for two party members, and we have to deal with the flying demon thing, I guess. But we'll do that next time. Okay, let's cut the timer on Kodaka for tonight, and then get set up for the King's Quest. So, um, I gotta get my computer booted up. So I'll do that, and uh, we'll switch over to King's Quest here. So let me change the game and then send out the notification. So yonder. King's Quest 5. Announce game change. Okay. All right, I'll be back in a minute while I get my computer booted up because I got to switch out stuff and disconnect my mic. So stay tuned. Quest 5. Absence makes the heart go yonder. So we've already played King's Quest 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now we're moved on to 5. So this is from 1990. The, uh... Uh... God, King's Quest 4 was like 89, I think. So there's there's pretty short turnaround on these games. Um, King's Quest 1 was 85. King's Quest 2 was 86, I think. Uh, 3 was 87, I want to say. Or 88. 87, 88, and then 4 was 89. So now, 1990. Plus 5. So it's still an adventure game, just like the previous games in the series. And uh, I think the box art got uh, got really good. I'm pretty sure this is the original box art for uh, King's Quest 5. So, 
an experience the whole family will enjoy. It's got this cool golden box. Absence Makes the Heart Go Yonder is the subtitle for this game. So we got this, this cool art of King Graham in the mountains. There's a, the shadow of a wolf behind him. And then the Ice Palace. So Sierra Online Publishing. So sticker on the box, because this was a PC game, so you had to make sure that your uh, your hardware is able to play it. So um, it requires EGA, Tandy, VGA, or MCGA. That's uh, that's for the, the video output. Um, yep, this is a Cedric game. Uh, it's recommended that you use a mouse or joystick, and it might as well be required, because uh, this, this is a mouse game. <laughs> And trying to play this on anything but a mouse is... Ah, uh, that ain't happening. Uh, yeah, there's a hole in my ear. <laughs> you, can't, you can't quite see through it, though. Uh, so 286 performance or better. Uh, I'm going to play this at, at full speed on a 450 megahertz. Because this game isn't speed sensitive, so it doesn't really matter. Um, this is a well-programmed game. Uh, so supported in terms of sound. So... Roland MT32, officially supported. LAPC1 and CM32L, those are all Roland MT32 equivalents. Um, the CM32L is the, the one I was talking about during King's Quest IV. That this one, if you wanted to pick up one of these nowadays, it's like $1,000. And the only benefit for the CM models over the MT32 is that it plays a few extra sound effects in like five games. Um, so that's what the extra thousand dollars gets you. Or you could use the Munt um, emulator and just plug in your old computer to a, a cheap new one and have it emulate the MT32 and the CM32L. And it, it actually sounds better than the original hardware, believe it or not. Um, and I, I'm just using the original hardware because I'm a purist. But if I were going for the, the absolute best audio quality, I would actually emulate the MT32, because it would actually sound better. Um, just throwing that out there <laughs> for all the, the hardware purists out there. It actually is better in this case to emulate. Um, so AdLib and Sound Blaster as well, and then PS1 and Game Blaster. I'm not sure what they mean by PS1. That must be some special, special sound card thing I don't know about. And then it was also distributed on both 3.5 inch and 5.25 and inch floppy disks, which we will see when we get to that. Um, so Sierra, and then by Roberta Williams. So we got another another by Roberta Williams game here. And then the back of the box. Journey into Danger. The greatest adventure in the history of Daventry is about to begin. As you embark with King Graham on the most thrilling and perilous adventure of his career, the quest for the missing royal family of Daventry. Experience the magical world of King's Quest V and discover why more people have played King's Quest than any other computer game series in history. Roberta Williams has been designing graphic adventure games since 1980, beginning with the groundbreaking Mystery House. Well, we might have to play Mystery House at some point. I've never played that one, and it's probably amazing. Uh... The first computer game to combine text and graphics. She's gone on to become the best-selling interactive adventure author in the world. So it doesn't say authoress anymore. It says author. Sure. Uh, her King's Quest series has sold more than a million copies worldwide, making it the best-selling computer adventure ever. So when we played, when we did King's Quest 4, it said half a million. And now it's up to a million already. All right. Sure. Uh, features a rich, complex story with highly developed characters. Alright. Sure. The most beautiful and detailed graphics ever seen in a Sierra 3D adventure game. Um, they call these 3D adventure games, by the way, because you can move forward and backward into the screen. That's the only thing that makes it 3D. And you can move behind objects in the foreground. That's, that is how, why they call it a 3D adventure game. Sure. Uh, delightful original stereo soundtrack. The, there actually is music in this game, more than in 4. Um, no typing required. A simple new interface permits complex game interactions without typed input. We'll, I'll speak more about this later into the game, but this, this I dispute. I highly dispute this. <laughs> uh, all right. 
here's what players are saying about King's Quest V. Congratulations on a towering achievement in storytelling, says unnamed quoter. Simply the best graphics I've ever seen on a computer anywhere. Uh, 1990? Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, breathtaking backgrounds and unbelievably smooth animation. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Uh, calling KQV a blockbuster is like calling Mount Everest a big rock. Uh, are these real quotes? <laughs> okay, so there's 16... Okay, so they, they actually show different screenshots of the different versions. So this is from the, the 16 color version of the game, and so is this. And then down here is not accurate. This... Okay, I played King's Quest V before, and King Graham's sprite does not look like that. And this background, this background is in the game, and so is this one, but King Graham is not that big. He's like, he's like that big in the scene. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so we'll, we'll have to remember these two for later, because this is... This is inaccurate. Um, Alright, so we got new updated photo of Roberta Williams. She's got uh, she's got a perm going this time. So this is slightly different. Roberta Williams is the originator of the 3D adventure game. She has won numerous awards for her King's Quest and other computer game designs. And her contributions to the entertainment software industry have earned her the title The Reigning Queen of Adventure Gaming. Alright. I don't dispute that. That's 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 accurate. Uh, patent pending. King's Quest V contains technology described in U.S. Patent Application five nine eight one seven four. All right, hold up, hold up. I got Opera open here. Uh, let's get the keyboard up here. U.S. Patent. U.S. Patent 598174. Uh, this is from. It's a dress day. All right, hold up. Let me, let me bring this up on screen here. Uh. This is this is a patent from 1898 on like woodworking. <laughs> 5 US patent 598174. Is there a difference between applications and existing patents? Cuz this is I, were they just they just making shit up here? Five nine eight one seven four. A uh, method of triple co-extruding a meat-based product. Probably not that. Uh. Okay, it might be this one. This is about photographs, though. This is photograph processing, and there's no images of it. This is from Kodak, from 1944, so <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Okay. Sure. Well, we'll just say, yeah, sure. They probably had some sweet patent. Uh, there's the disc art. So the, the version that we're going to be playing is going to be the CD version of King's Quest V. This is actually the the first King's Quest game that I ever played. And it was my first adventure game, and it was my first Sierra game. Um, I didn't get this when it was in a box. I got it as part of something called... Uh, it was a, a like a 10-foot variety pack. It was a, a pack of CDs that you got from the grocery store. And it was like... It was 20 bucks or 10 bucks or something. And it came with like eight CDs of like two of them were just shareware compilations and then 
like three were utilities and then like two or three of them were actual full games and uh that's how i got king's quest 5 and i think i also got space quest 4 from a similar pack um and maybe king's quest 6 at a later time but but yeah that's that's actually how i I got into adventure game was from from this from one of those weird compilation things from the grocery store uh, back in the day. Um, so that's uh, that's what the discard for that looks like. So this is the this is the original release it looks like for it. So this is this is a very different uh, very different cover for the game. So we got there's there's our boy Cedric on this one. Um, so this, Tandy, Roland, yeah, everything looks the same on this sticker, so I'm not sure what uh, what's so different about about this box, but I found this box when I was online, so sure. Roberta Williams and King Graham cordially invite you, sure. Um, okay, so these, these screenshots are accurate. So this is the IBM VGA, uh, CD-ROM version may vary. And these are actually accurate of, uh, of the game. Like here, this was one of the shots from the box from earlier. How do you detail? Delightful? No. Yeah. Okay, there's nothing in here about patents either. Weird. And then here's the, uh, here's the discs, the diskettes that uh, the game came on. Um, and you can see here... 9 out of 10 discs. So, you would have had to install all of these to uh, to your hard drive, I think, to uh, to get the game to go. So, installing this game probably took a while. And you can see why uh, um, playing it on CD definitely the way to go, because there's hardly any installation. Um, and this is the startup disc, so I think you had to have this in in order to even get the game going. Okay, so there there are multiple versions of the game, but we're only going to be playing the CD version. So, uh, so that'll be that. Hello, Summer. Yeah, I uh, I spent a couple days uh, fixing the website and upgrading hardware and and hosting and networking and all that, and it it seems like the website is fully fully armed and operational now. For once. Oh shit. Oh god, my. <laughs> all right, hold up. Hold up, I gotta disconnect my stuff because my trackball just flew out of the ball fell out, flew out of my trackball and went across the road. Like I gotta face down the track. Alright, hold up. Hey, hold up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, CDs with caddies, yep. Yeah, I remember those things. Those were a pain in the ass. Oh boy. My uh my first C D drive was a two X drive. Was the the first one I ever got. Okay, so let's uh get this going here. So just like with King's Quest four, so all right, I'm I'm kind of torn with how I want to approach this. Where's my phone? So, all right. So King's Quest Five gives us several options for how we want to do audio. So let's. Uh, which one is it? This one. Okay. So, just like in King's Quest Four. Here's the Roland MT32. I have it set up and plugged into my main PC right here. Um, so that's connected down to my, my DOS computer here. So King's Quest V also supports general MIDI, which is something that this uses. This is a Roland M uh, SC55. 
Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the MT32 for this game because it would have been more directly supported and would have made more sense to uh, to use that for a game from, from that time period. Uh, the game also it has the, the beeper support. Um, and there's also like ad lib support, so I can I can make a save at a point where there is music in the game, and we can we can compare and see what all of them sound like. But for the most part, we're just going to be using the Roland MT32 for the uh, the audio of this one. So that's uh, that's what I've decided for that one. Okay, so let's uh, let us get going here. All right, King's Quest V, Absence Makes the Heart Go Yonder. I need to switch my audio over to Coaxial. I need to do an audio test here. Yeah, everybody's favorite sound. I need to turn off my PlayStation input monitor because we're not using that. Let's turn on Roland Cam since we're going to be using the Roland. And then get this lined up properly. Like, like so. So it says hard MPU because that is the, um, that is the special audio board that I'm using to uh, talk to the MT32. So you can't just directly plug in an MT32 into a computer. It has to be able to translate all the the weird commands that the MT32 produces, which is why a setup that uses an MT32 is so rare and expensive outside of the, the emulator, because it ain't easy. Okay, and then we're gonna use the MT32 feed. Okay, all right. So, let's just show the um, the installer here for a moment before we get into it. So C drive. So here is here's all the options that you get with uh, with King's Quest V. So 256 grayscale or 16 colors. We'll we'll do 256 because sure. Um, why did that? That wasn't supposed to do that. Okay, hold up. All right, so by default, we have the, the MT32 selected. That's, that, uh, that's this up here. Um, there's also general MIDI. So this will be through the SC55, which is plugged in through a different interface. <clears throat> uh, AdLib is the uh, Sound Blaster MIDI. And then internal speaker, which y'all know what that sounds like. So we'll go with MT32. Uh, we got to make sure it's connected to the, the external computer port and then plugged into speakers. Um, so it's not like you plug in your MT32 to the input of your sound card. You can do that, but um, most people just had their own set of speakers just for the MT32 plugged into that. Um, so that's that's kind of the setup that we're using for this, kind of. And then for speech, CMS Sound Blaster, I'm not going to select this because... Uh, this game is really, really finicky with uh, um, speech settings, and I don't want to mess it up. I got it working, and I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> so we'll just do that. Okay. So let's uh, let's do it. Uh, there is also a native Windows version of the game, but for compatibility and ease of use, the DOS version is what we're going to be doing here. So you can see right here, it's actually programming the MT32. Have you previously played King's Quest V? All right. You ready for some highly compressed speech? No, we haven't. Warning, this cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information or clues to complete this game. Please be sure to check your inventory if you decide to skip. 
So there's also a manual for this game, but I looked through it and there's nothing, like... There's nothing mind-blowing about it. There is some copy protection stuff, but besides that, it's a plot synopsis of... Um, of the first four games. And, like, how to install it. And it's... There's nothing too, too interesting about it, so... Not gonna bother with this menu. Or this manual. Alright. Oh no, our castle. So you can see here, this is not using the MT32 at all. This is all music coming from the, the CD. So if the music sounds too good to be MT32, that's because it is. <laughs> so right away, it looks a hell of a lot better than King's Quest IV did. out of thin air. Thank goodness he didn't notice me. Well, don't stop now. Go on. He conjured up a terrible whirlwind that swirled faster and faster around the castle. With another incantation, Mordak then caused the wind to draw the castle up into the sky and out of sight. Ooh, it was something to see, all right. Wizard, Mordak, want my castle. What could he have against me and my family? That I don't know. Ooh, I only know that it was Mordak who took your castle and your family. Well, perhaps I can help you. My employer also happens to be a wizard, which is why I recognized Mordak. Ooh, unlike Mordak, though, my employer is a very good wizard. His name is Crispin Arthur, but we all call him Crispin for short. The only problem is, you see... <laughs> oh, I, I already have preconceptions about Cedric the Owl. I've beaten King's Quest V, like, triple digit times, I think. <laughs> so, I played this game before. <clears throat> anyway, oh, where was I? Oh, yes. The only problem is that Crispin is getting on in years, and tends to be a bit forgetful. I don't know. This doesn't sound as if it would work. Oh, sure it would. Crispin is a very qualified wizard. One of the best. He just gets a little forgetful now and again. That's all. Now, oh, dang, that's right. It? I did say I haven't played I before. I brought it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. What is that? Hello, Ed. Well... It is my opinion that you don't stand a chance against the likes of Mordak. Ooh, excuse me for saying, Your Majesty, but you don't have a choice. You must come with me. I'm sure Crispin can help you. Hey, Alyssa. Good to see you. Alright. The fairy dust again. Third King's Quest game so far. Just some old leftover fairy dust I've been carrying around. Ooh, it'll help you to fly. You can follow me to the land of Serenia, where Crispin and I live. It's much too far to walk, you know. 
Oh, I think the fairy dust is still good. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, this is angel dust from angels. So if the, uh, if the audio for the speech seems a little low, um, by default the game sets it to 80%. I will turn it up once we get into the main game, but I can't do anything with it now. Yeah, this is, this is a really beautiful background, background art for this. You can really tell they, they went hard in the paint on getting really good artists on this one. And they could certainly afford them because they made bank with the first four games. And and yeah, when this game came out, this was like just like the the best looking game. Down here, come on. Okay, here I come. Like considering the the normal average game from 1990, this looks just so much better than anything that had come out before it. Just wore off. Cedric? Where have you been? I've been calling for you. Well, well. What have we here? A bit clumsy, are you? Well, come on in the house and dry off. No sense sitting around like a wet dog. Cedric, go into the house and pour each of us a nice hot cup of tea. Ooh, I like this one. Cedric doesn't have hands. How's he gonna do that? So there's also like crackling and popping in the audio. That's just compression. That's not any of my gear doing that. The Society of Wizards has always taken a dim view of Mordak and his abuse of his power. Why he's even been put on suspension a few times. <gasps> it never seems to do any good, though. Crispin, why would Mordak want to take my family or castle? What did we ever do to him? I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that. Mordak is a very unpredictable wizard. I've never understood that evil mind of his. Ooh. I thought perhaps you could help His Majesty, Kristen. That's why I brought him here. Well, let me see now. I used to be a very powerful wizard at one time, you know. But I've gotten a little rusty lately. <laughs> a little rusty? That's quite enough from you, Cedric. Oh, yes, sir, Kristen. Sir. I don't know what I have that would be of much use to you. Most of my wizard stuff is pretty old and worn out. But let's see what I can find. Cedric is an owl. Oh man. All right, five minutes later, he's gonna make it to that chest. All right, Crispin, come on. No got all day here. No, that won't do. That's all used up. Hmm. It might work. Here, eat this. <laughs> what is that? That's an old piece of magical white snake I had left over from last year. With it, you'll be able to communicate with the natural and animal world. You could find that quite helpful. Some fairy dust and white snake. Here's All right. my old wand. I don't even know if it works anymore. Most of its power may be gone. You should know that wands are like pets. 
They've got to get to know you before they'll work for you. Just treat it with care and respect, and hopefully it will do something for you. You'd better get going, my boy. No telling what that confounded Morlack could be up to. You go with him, Cedric. Show him the way. Who? Me? Yes, you. Don't be such a coward. Now go on. You'd better get started. Thank you, sir. I appreciate all you've done for me. The guy looking like that offered me some year-old white snake. I would absolutely not eat it, but this is this is a different day and age, I guess. Ooh, I suggest we visit the town first. How about it, Your Majesty? Please don't call me Your Majesty, Cedric. It's much too formal. I'd like it if you'd just call me Graham. Ooh, I'd be delighted to, Graham. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, the town. You might be able to find some supplies there. It's just over a little hill to the south, not too far. Well then, let's be on our way, Cedric. Okay, so the... Let me turn up the volume here. So, an amazing innovation here. If I can get this in frame. There we go. Okay, so... Notice the volume slider. If I turn it down, volume zero, volume 27, you can control the MT32 volume from the game. I don't have to screw around with the, and there's a checksum error. <laughs> don't worry about that. So the, the MT32 is actually creating those bird sounds that you're hearing. Uh, so this is save slash kq5. So we'll do that as our save directory. Okay. All right, and then, boom. Okay. So yeah, you uh, you can't see the MIDI light coming on, but uh, the MT is actually doing that. Okay, so we got start of our new notes here. So we got wizard house. Is this screen, and it. Looks like we can only go south from here. King Graham, heavy of heart, searches far and wide for his beloved family, who've been stolen by the evil wizard Mordak. Impatiently, Cedric waits for Graham. The hand-hewn wooden door is recessed within a small porch. A small cellar door is located under the house. A tiny pond adds charm to Crispin's forested home. Okay. Nestled among the trees of the forest sits the wizard Crispin's worn but cozy cottage. All right. So if I... The, the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard move around this. And if I turn off numlock... Okay. So the, the Phi button on the numpad changes these icons. And then you can move around the cursor like that. The, the zero key on the on the numpad switches between walk and your last action thing. So the here's the big change between four and five is that uh, so it's a mouse driven interface and we've got walk, look at, pick up, and talk. Uh, this is our use inventory item. Uh, like quick slot and then this is our inventory the old wand doesn't seem to have any vitality left in it okay so that's all we got is a an old wand in there and then here's our interface for all this we'll keep speed at that because if i turn it up too much things can go wrong uh the detail slider i'm not so sure what that what that's really for because it doesn't seem to do much in the games um i will be messing with that towards the end of the game because I know that there is an there is a issue with the detail slider later, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, and then this is just hey, what is this? This icon is for talking. So we get a completely different person telling us. This icon is for doing. Sure. So this is the the narrator. This icon is for looking. This cartoon contains information needed to beat this game. All right. So, oh geez, okay. I do need to turn that up a little bit. That is way too slow. All right, it's time for everybody's favorite favorite line in the game. Are you ready for this? Graham, watch out! 
A poisonous snake! A poisonous snake. Alright, so there it is. There, we got there. So this is snake screen. So there's screens to the up, left, down, right. A large venomous snake blocks Graham's passage to the east. Okay. Cedric keeps his eye on Graham while perched on a nearby tree branch. So we can... We get near it. Yeah, if only we had a bridle. <laughs> Alright. So if we get near it... In silence, the large serpent eyes Graham menacingly. I could have sworn it talks to you. That wasn't wise, Graham. He who speaks with forked tongue should never be trusted. Okay, so there is, uh, there is proper death lines in this game. Unlike in 4 and the he previous one. Half goes to the east up into the mountains? That's the route to Mordak's castle. Okay, so Mordak's castle is that way in the mountains, but there's a snake in the way. So obviously we gotta, gotta do something about that. Alright, so Cedric said that there was a town far to the south. Okay. This is... This is the town. Alright. So we're getting some proper MT32 music here. At least I think this is MT32. Yeah, okay. The quaint little town of Serenia nestles at the base of a great snow-capped mountain range which rises sharply to the east. Okay, so the town is called Serenia. Can we look at the cow? Secure within a small pen, a spotted cow quietly chews her cud. Okay, can we talk to the cow? Unfortunately, the cow doesn't have anything to say. Her mouth is too full of cud. Dang it, can't talk to the cow. Rip. If you're going into town, I'll just wait for you here. I had a nasty run-in with a big dog once, and I feel much safer out here. Okay. Alright, so this is... You can actually see the MT-32 work in here. Um, so this is one of the first spots in the game where there is proper music. So this is... This is the MT-32 soundtrack. So this would... This is 1988 is when the, the MT-32 came out. So it would have been a few years old by this point. Um, and I think there was like four or five Seer games that, that use the MT-32 before this. So so that's what that sounds like. Now, th this is, this is when I want really to want show the difference between the other versions. So if we go back to install... Okay, so internal speaker, so it's time for some beepy boys here. So this is what it sounds like. Thanks for playing. Alright, so most people in 1990 probably would have had a sound card at this point, so... It, it would not have been common for somebody to be playing have you this. previously played King's Quest? Yeah, 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 I have. Um, for somebody to be playing this on a, a PC speaker only. But if they did, this is what it would sound like.
There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, LCC, I um I made big changes to the the website really? hosting and everything should actually just just work now. Um I spent the last few days working really hard on all that stuff and I'm glad it's actually working. <laughs> so, okay. Uh so that's that. And then the other thing here, so the okay, so here's the the sound blaster version of that. Um so this will be directly generated by the sound blaster card. And that should sound slightly different there too. Thank you, don't touch the door. It's it is very nice of Okay, so that's that's just playing off the CD since we're getting into the game. Here are the sound blaster slash ad. Have you previously played King's Quest V? So you can hear the birds. The bird sounds slightly different. It's kind of a harsher tone. So this this is how I played the game. This is this is the sound of what I listened to when I first played the game in the early nineties. This is the sweet, sweet ad lib. <laughs> the sweet sound of ad lib. Beautiful, right? Do you really want to quit? Beautiful. Beautiful. And then. So the, the premium option when this game came out would have been the SC55. So that, that is using the general MIDI interface, the general MIDI protocol. The difference between the MT32 and general MIDI is that um, the MT32 had to be programmed on the fly, let's say, for how it generated sounds, which is why if you select MT32, it takes an extra five or so seconds to launch the game because it has to program the MT32. Um, general MIDI doesn't do any of that. It just has a set set of sounds, and then it would play those. It would say, hey, play a trumpet here at this pitch at this time. Um, whereas the MT32 is like, okay, program your sound bank to this weird sound, and then play this weird sound. And then later into the song, it will reprogram that bank again to... So instead of making weird sound, make a bird sound instead. Uh, so that's that's the difference between those things there. Okay, so general MIDI, this is through an SC55 Mark I, which is kind of the model you want to use for um, that. Have you previously played King's Quest V? All right, SC55. So, proper bird sounds. So the, the bird sounds sound pretty good. Save, keep, keep five. So, so there we go. That's SC55. So this um this game would have been a very 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 early general MIDI game. So this doesn't properly take advantage of general MIDI, but it does work. And I think it might be patched in because it doesn't mention general MIDI on the on the box of the game. Um, but it does work. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll go back to rolling mode for the rest of the game. I just wanted to highlight. Do uh, you really? What all that sounds like. Am I playing this off of 46? No, this is a um here I'll I'll bring up the camera. Uh bring up the camera again while I am not currently in the game. Uh where is my camera? There it is. I am playing this off of so this is a CRT, this is a 24 inch uh Sony FW nine hundred equivalent. And then the computer is down here. So there's the SC fifty five. 
Here's the MT32. And here is the PC. It's got a uh, Voodoo Banshee card. Uh, the processor is a AMD K63, 450 megahertz. We got a Sound Blaster Live um, modded for optical digital output. And I have a hard MPU is doing all that. And that's also going out to an OLED and then off to the, the stream, off to the side. Um, I also have a, a Windows dedicated Windows 98 or no, Windows XP machine right up there, but we haven't had cause to use that yet. So that's the setup. We're running off of all original hardware. No uh, no emulating going on here. Okay. Uh, install, set this to MT32. All right, MT32. So when we launch the game, you'll see up here the the screen is going to have a message there and that message is on there while it's programming the mt32 so it's actually sending midi signals to it right now telling it what instruments to use oh <laughs> amazing so so this is what it sounds like if you use mt32 drivers on the wrong on the wrong thing. Have you previously played King's Quest V? All right, this is the audio back. So I have I have both devices plugged into my mixer at once, and I didn't immediately switch them over. So we got that's that's what it sounds like when you send MT32 Warning. signals to a uh, to something that isn't an MT32. It just sounds like garbage. <laughs> All right, back to it. Um, Okay. Mm. All right, so Taylor, okay. I gotta turn the volume back up. While blocking an alleyway, a frustrated man fixes a broken wheel on his wagon. Yeah, I, I considered getting a 486, but actually I'm gonna I'm gonna exit the game one more time you... just to just to show YouTube guy in YouTube chat at uh, why this is particularly cool. So this uh, this system you can actually downclock it to 486 levels. So it's currently running at 450 megahertz on my uh, my AMD. Um, but what I can do here is I can essentially turn this into a 486 or a 386 equivalent in terms of speed. Um, somebody actually figured out that you can send send these hacky signals to the CPU. Um, to downclock it, and you can do this during Windows. So I can make this uh, 200 megahertz um, without the internal caches, and that that essentially makes it as quick as a 386 or 486, depending on what I've selected. So I'm not going to apply that because it's going to screw up uh, screw up King's Quest. But uh, for you don't have to pay 486 prices to to get 486 performance with the original hardware. Because uh, I know 486s are only getting more and more expensive as the, the years go by. And since I'm using this um, this newer AMD board, I actually have an AGP slot. I got AGP, PCI, and ISA. Um, have you previously played King's Quest? And it is much easier to run things. Okay. All right, back to it. Now for real this time. Now we're going to play the video game. All right. Uh, save KQ5. Okay, let's uh, talk to this guy. How goes it with you, good fellow? Not well, I'm afraid. This old wagon's always giving me trouble. Can I help you in any way? Thank you kindly, but I think I can handle it. All right then, good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. This wagon, I'm gonna need it. Okay. Also notice that it, it ducks the MT32 audio during dialogue. Uh, okay, we got a barrel here. Graham notices an old wooden barrel on the street corner. Okay. Inside the barrel, Graham sees an old rotting fish. Ah, a rotting fish. Just what we need. Can we talk to... Nope. We can only talk to alive animals, apparently. Inside the barrel. 
Graham leans way down into the barrel and removes, phew, the smelly old fish. <laughs> yep, fish, dead fish, and dead and rotting fish. We're gonna have zombie. F so, okay. May I help you, sir? All right. So remember when we were playing through Shenmue 2? Or no, Shenmue 1. So, uh, in the cutscenes, in Shenmue 1, when you're getting your job to be a forklift driver. I don't like this at all. Um, and he opens the door in the Shenmue forklift office. That sound effect is a sound effect they use in Shenmue. May I help you, sir? That same exact sound effect. So... <laughs> that That is why I'll always recognize that sound effect. I'm interested in buying something here. Ah, let me show you some things. A fine piece of cloth. With this material, I can make you beautiful shirts. There isn't a more beautiful piece of fabric to be found anywhere. With this, I could make you the finest trousers you've ever had. Well, what do you think? Well, right now I'm just looking. Thanks anyway. Sure, sure. Whatever you say, I'm just here to help. And complete with sures. I don't like this at all. <laughs> the rude customer doesn't care to talk to Graham. Hey, Kevin. All right, what about this? In the corner of the shop, cloak. draped casually over a tailor's form, Graham sees a thick, fur-lined cloak. All right. Can we... Here, let me help you with that. Oh, that cloak fits you perfectly. It just looks wonderful on you. Let me tell you, it will certainly keep you toasty warm during the coming winter. Let me know if you wish to buy it. Well, I... Will you take this, this rotting fish? Phew! This smelly old fish is disgusting. Alright, would you like this fish? The tailor wouldn't find that suitable for his business. Sure. Oh, Alright. Guy at the cart is gone, and now there's something shiny over there. Graham notices a shiny silver coin lying forgotten on the street near the broken wagon. Okay. Bending down, Graham quickly retrieves the silver coin from the street. All right. It's ours now, I guess. Would you like this fish lady? Oh. All right. What else we got here? We got toy shop. And... Quaint houses and little shops line the town's main cobblestone street. And then shoe shoppy. All right. I actually, I kind of prefer the MT32 version of this. Come on in, look around. Let me know if you're interested in anything. Is this the guy that was in that coffin in Kodelka? <laughs> the shipment of coffin wood hasn't come in yet. What should we do? If it's not in by tomorrow, I'll send you to the sawmill. Okay, Papa? All right. A pet goldfish swims endlessly around in its fishbowl. Can we talk to the goldfish? Man, this this magical white snake is... Hey, Papa? Yeah, my darling? Can I keep this doll? I really like her. Now, Katrina, you know these toys are for sale for other kinder. Besides, you've got plenty of dolls. You can play mid her, but just be careful. All right, Grandpapa. I'll take care of her. Sure. Yeah, can we can we give Goldfish a friend? Dang it. That's a fine sled, isn't it? Any child would love to have it. Yes, I was just admiring the workmanship. Yes, for a child. Danke. If you'd like to buy it, let me know. All right, how much? This is a fine little toy shop you have here. You must be very proud. Danke, son. I've worked very hard at it over the yards. 
the yards. You know, you need to really love it. And I do. Are most of these toys your creations? Yeah, most of them. But not all. Some my son made. Some I bought. Some I traded for. You're very talented. Danke, danke. Well, let me know if I can help you. All right. They just, they made this guy have every fourth word be German for some reason. Sure. Take a look around if you want, but we don't have any shoes to sell you right now. We sold our last finished pair yesterday. Our business ain't doing so good anymore, and we're getting too old to keep trying. <laughs> Is there anything I can do to help? There ain't nothing you can do, short of buying us out. But like I said, if you want to look around, feel free. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, this the shoe shoppy does not have. He's got a shoe. All right, can we pet the dog? This old dog doesn't appeal to Graham. What? <laughs> can we talk to the dog? The old dog pays no attention to Graham. Do you like this dead fish dog? The dog doesn't even lift his head to take notice of it. <laughs> Would you like this dead fish? The weary old woman has no interest in it. The shoemaker isn't even paying any attention to Graham. Well, geez. All right, nice shop you got here. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. We... Quaint houses. Oh. The town is busy with people going about their daily chores. All right. That's like all we can do in the town here. All right, back with our boy Cedric. Okay. So so far the the game world is four screens north and south tall, which is half of King's Quest 1. Okay. A rutted dirt road travels east and west beside the rushing river. The cold river courses swiftly by the town bakehouse. With a fine view of the rushing river, the bakehouse sits a bit out of town, along an old rutted road. See the road there? Back to the east is the town. <laughs> he really wants to go to back to town, I guess. All right. All right, hold up. It's time for some some real King's Quest hours here. No, Graham, don't! Too bad. Graham's swimming skills were no match for the mighty river. If I die on purpose, I'm not counting it. Well, I guess I died on purpose this thing, so sure. It's... Sure. Yep, a little bit of water. All right. Ooh, I'll wait for you here, Graham. There's that Shenmu door again. And how is your poor dear mother doing, William? Oh, she hasn't been doing too well lately. But my brother and I help out whenever we can. Thanks for asking, Amanda. Austin, keep your fingers out of that pie. The pies look lovely. I think I'll take one. Yes, they were just made fresh this morning. Here you go. Yes, this will be a fine dessert for our dinner tonight. Let's go home, Austin. They give you, they give you this cursor during this. I'm not sure why. It's not like you can do anything during this. Here's the last of the pies. Welcome to our bakehouse, Traveler. Of course, all of our wares are wonderful, 
but today we've got a special on custard pies. Oh. Just one silver coin each, but take your time. Let me know when you're ready. One whole silver coin? It is but a common silver coin. <gasps> Alright, can we pet the cat? The cat doesn't look very friendly at all. The cat doesn't appear to like Graham, much less answer him. Man, they... <laughs> the cat is much too lazy to care about it. Yeah, that must be a sphinx cat. Delicious mouth-watering custard pies lining the tables and countertop attract Graham's eyes and nose. Everything looks so delicious, it's hard to decide what to buy. <laughs> Everybody has that problem, but what a problem to have. Those custard pies look most delicious. Yes, they're made from a recipe handed down from our dear mama and her mama before her. Hmm, it's still hard to decide though. Well that that's well, the same skin tone time. as uh, no hurry. as everybody else in the game, so Oh, why is this okay? <laughs> it's just it just hangs on that line. Take your time. No need to hurry. Sir, I would like to purchase one of your custard pies. These pies cost one silver coin each. I've got it right here. Here you go. I hope you enjoy your custard pie. Oh, I'm sure I will. Sure. Sure you will. Mmm, the custard pie looks delicious. All right. So I'm curious if we, uh... Can we eat the pie? Mmm. That was the best custard pie Graham has ever eaten. Okay. So right there I just soft locked. And you you wouldn't know it until hours and hours into the game. But this is King's Quest V. <laughs> so So that that is a horrible mistake to do that. Shenmue door. So yeah, this King's Quest V is notorious as uh, as one of the the games that just you can soft lock over just the, the dumbest things. And I'll point out every time we come across something that that does it. Just off a rutted dirt road, a country inn overlooks the picturesque rushing river. All right, the Swarthy Hog Inn. A large haystack dominates the area in front of the barn. An old, uninteresting barn is located behind the country inn. This is a side entrance of the quaint country inn. Okay. Let's, let's go check out the inn. I'm sure it is filled with... with very nice people who will help us on our quest. Ooh, I'll wait for you out here! I don't like that place! A flea-bitten old dog lies asleep in the corner. Graham notices three rough-looking men huddled over the bar in serious conversation. Since they're talking in such low tones, Graham can't quite hear what they're saying. Excuse me, gentlemen. We like this fish. Well, all right. Can we... I like to pet your dog. The dog is just out of Graham's reach. Dang it. Well, get over there, Graham. Graham has nothing to say to a sleeping dog. That... That dog is clearly not sleeping. Alright, gentlemen. You know that job we pulled yesterday? Where's the rest of the loot, huh? I think one of you guys is holding out on me. 
gentlemen, please excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Diana's full ain't got no more rooms. Hey, boss, this guy looks like a real troublemaker. What do you want me to do with him? Rub him out. Rub him out. Struggle as he might, Graham could not escape his bonds. Don't worry, Graham. The innkeeper will soon put you out of your misery. Okay. So yeah, obviously... Can't go in there. Rub him out. Carefully, Graham searches through the haystack, but doesn't see anything of importance. Okay. Oh, we got a... We got important King's Quest business to do here. No, Graham, don't! Too bad. Graham's swimming skills were no match for the mighty river. All right. But pretty much the same one as the last time. Okay. All right. Uh... Woo, watch out for the bear, Graham. All right. So Cedric is telling us that this bear is up to no good. So first things first. No, Graham, don't! <laughs> Wait, this isn't a rushing river. This is just... <laughs> uh... Too bad. Oh. Graham's swimming skills were no match for the mighty river. Alright. A large bear seems to be very interested in the honey inside the old tree. Okay. A swarm of bees buzz around a hole in a rotted old tree. Graham notices a large stick lying on the ground near the old tree. The bear is too intent on the honey to listen to Graham. Okay. These aren't very talkative bees. Alright, well, I just need this stick. Give me that stick. Oh, <laughs> tisk, tisk. Graham should know better than to feed the bears. Sure. What's Cedric got to say about this? Having other things on his mind, Cedric doesn't appear to be in the mood to talk right now. Well... Would you like this fish bear? I'm Queen Beatrice, kind sir. I wish to thank you ever so much for saving our hive from the claws of that horrible bear. In return, I offer you a luscious honeycomb from our hive. Please feel free to retrieve one. I promise my bees won't harm you. It may come in handy on your travels. Sure. Alright. And also the stick. Probably also useful. Graham bends down and picks up the large stick from the ground. Graham reaches a hand into the beehive and retrieves a very sticky chunk of honeycomb. Wrapping it in a protective piece of cloth, he then pockets it. He pockets it. That's some um, Shenmue tier acting there. So can we go south from here? There's this log just going to be in the way. Okay, can't go south. All right, so as far as mapping goes, I've been... I headed south from the wizard's house to town, then just hooked west to the bakery, the inn, and then here's the truth, the bees. So if we keep going west here. Woo, there's nothing but a hot, dry desert for the west. Most people avoid it because 
there are bandits out there. Bandits. Oh, if you insist on going, I'll wait for you here. I insist. Okay. So this is this is the desert. Well, there you are. I was just starting to get concerned. Don't worry about me, Cedric. I'm used to this kind of thing. So we'll we'll deal with the desert later when I know we need to. Um I don't have a pre-made map of the desert, so we're going to A bully of a dog terrorizes the poor ants as he playfully digs at their large anthill. A mangy old dog digs playfully at the huge anthill while the poor ants scurry about frantically. The dog doesn't seem to be a friendly sort at all. Ooh, is that a new dance, Graham? The bubbling? Can't get killed by the dog, apparently. Ooh, is that the new dance frame? The bubbling. <laughs> Alright. It appears to be an average stick of wood. Sure. Honey drips at the edges of the honeycomb chunk. Here, boy! <laughs> it runs off into the desert. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm King Antony the Great. May I ask who you are? Why, certainly. I'm King Graham of Daventry, and this is my friend Cedric. We're seeking a way to cross the Great Mountains to the ocean on the other side. That is a very perilous undertaking. I wish you would reconsider. But if you shall not, in return for rescuing our home from that flea bitten cur, I wish to offer you our help, if perchance you may ever need it. Thank you very much, King Antony. Cedric and I appreciate your kind offer. We look forward to meeting you again. Okay. A colony of large ants parade up and down a huge anthill built amid some scrubby bushes. Door. So this is ants. Cedric, can we talk to talk to this animal? The ox's mouth is too full of grass to even attempt a conversation with Graham. <sighs> so they they give you the magical white snake to let you talk to animals, but there's been like three animals out of at least ten so far that the game has let us actually talk to. The sullen man doesn't appear to be the conversational sort. All right, we get our fortune told. It will cost you one gold coin to see Madamushka. One gold coin. Well, will you take this honeycomb? That is not a gold coin. <laughs> All right. He got me there. Okay. It's time for everybody's favorite part of King's Quest V. All right. Ooh, there's nothing but a hot, dry desert for the West. Most people avoid it because there are bandits out there. Ooh, if you insist on going, I'll wait for you here. Okay. We just got desert. Just mark it as D on my map because... Most of these screens are just going to be desert. Rocky cliffs rise high above Graham's head. 
Looking to the south, the desert seems to extend forever. So this is... This is another point in the game where they they needed to stretch this game out a bit. So this whole part of the game is is quite something. Yeah, the guy with the chin is Quest for Glory 4. Yep. That's that's the other other appearance of gypsies in uh in the quest games. I don't recall any in Space Quest. And I oh. The hot desert sun beats down on Graham. He's he's getting thirsty, I, I think is what that says. I haven't been keeping track of screens at all. I actually don't know what screen I'm on. <laughs> I think this is seven screens over. Okay. Life-giving water, nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. Okay. So this is some sort of temple thing in the desert. Sure. From across the desert sands, Graham can hear the sound of approaching hoofbeats. Hoofbeats? Well, I'm sure it's... A spy! Get him! Never trust a bad guy, Graham. How are you... Okay. So how are you supposed to know what the bad guy is? From a... Oh, hey. Okay. So what you have to do is... You gotta hide behind... This thing. Open sesame! Alright. So he has the staff thing, he knocks on it and says open sesame. Okay. And they go riding off to the, the left. Ah, life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. Okay. So if we go up to here. Carved into the rocky cliffs, an ancient temple towers above Graham as he surveys its ornate columns and freezes. Stone statues of Pegasus seem to guard the old crumbling temple. Looming majestically before him, the massive temple door beckons tantalizingly to Graham. Open Sesame! The temple door won't open. Perhaps there's something missing. Okay. Open Sesame! Open sesame! Alright. So clearly we need something else to get through there. Alright, and then the bandits went to the west of here. But I'm pretty sure that if we do go west of here, I'm going to turn up the game speed even more. So there's D for desert. 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 Hey, more desert. Prize. The hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on Graham. He must drink. And soon. And soon? Well... I don't think that's going to happen. So clearly wherever wherever the dudes on horses went. 
Too late, Graham collapses and dies of extreme thirst in the hot desert sun. If only he could have found an oasis. Dying for a drink, Graham? All right, so this, this is where the real fun of King's Quest V is. The desert. Okay, so if we head straight south from here, what do we got? So the what triggers the thirst in this is not the amount of time you spend in the desert, but how many screens you go through. Uh, desert. Hello, Dark Holy. I am uh I am doing the peace explosion and still. choking sands are taking their toll on Graham. All right, this he is must the drink and soon. No more speed runs, but we are doing peace explosion. I'm uh I'm about halfway ish through Kodelka right now, which is game number one ninety one. Alright, so this is still desert. Okay. The the desert a lot larger than Too late. Graham collapses and dies of extreme thirst in the hot desert sun. If only he could have found an oasis. Dying for a drink, Graham? I gotta save with the, the speed turned up here. <laughs> I'll have to keep resetting up. Okay, so as far as the desert goes... So, we're currently here. Um... The, the gypsy count is, is way back over there. So somewhere in this enormous, enormous desert area is where the, <laughs> uh, the plot stuff is. And that is part of the amazing fun, fun challenge of this part of the game is you just have to map out the desert and find where all the oases are. Oh, this one desert two. Desert two, more desert. Still more desert. So luckily, the desert is exactly the same every time you play the game. So in something like a speed run. Okay, so this is skeleton. So there's a skeleton here and a shoe. Oh, oh A picked clean and sun-bleached skeleton lies in the sand of the hot, dry desert. What happened? Who can say? But it makes Graham uneasy, nevertheless. Who can say? I... He died and left a shoe here. An old shoe lies forgotten near the poor skeleton. Was he killed with the shoe? So... So right here, this shoe is really important in this case. Uneasily, Graham reaches down and removes the old shoe from the desert sand. Okay, so we, we got a shoe, but we can't drink a shoe. So, we still have to solve our, our whole dying problem. Dying in the desert problem. So, south of the skeleton is Haymore Desert. Oh man, the cobbler... That's why he went out of business. He's paying off the local The hot sun and local thugs. Hands are taking their toll on Graham. Okay, so this we must is drink an and soon Oasis. Alright. So we, we found an oasis. So a screen to the east and then uh south ah, or goddess of skeleton. Nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. And then there's an oasis right here. So we can use this as a exploration launching point. So hey, south of the, the oasis, more desert. So we can we can explore even further south. 
now that we we drank water and I happen to know from having played this game many many times that the camp we're looking for is in the far southwest it's like at the very edge of where you can go in the desert the hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on Graham he must drink and soon all right so if we if we go west from here we got desert and then death too late Graham collapses and dies of extreme thirst in the hot desert sun if only he could have found an oasis dying if for only. A drink Graham all right so if we restore from the oasis so if we go a screen to the west from here and then south so we know that this is desert and this one here is desert so this is where we died previously when we came down this far because we didn't have a nearby oasis so this screen down here we have not been to so that's that's desert and then this screen. The hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on Graham. Also desert. He must drink, and soon. So if we go west from here, there's nothing. And then there's there's death. Too late. Graham collapses and dies of extreme thirst in the hot desert sun. So this is... If only he could have found an oasis. Dying for a drink, Graham? This is as far as we've been able to... Uh... To go from here. So assuming a, this is an oasis up here... This is kind of the, the maximum amount of screens we can do. So we can... We can make it to like this screen without dying. And this one, I guess, but we we can go no further from there. So this is this is kind of how you have to. This is how you have to King's Quest uh, Five. All right. So if we go south from here, or the next screen, desert, desert. <sighs> this is this is top tier gameplay from the, the brilliant mind. The hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on Graham. He must drink, and soon. Okay, I think it's. I think we're on this screen. Uh. Too late. Graham collapses and dies of extreme thirst in the hot desert sun. Oh man. If only he could have found an oasis. Dying for a drink, Graham? King's Quest 5, folks. Okay, so if we... This is a very Quest for Glory song, by the way. Alright. West? west and then another screen west and then we hook south okay and then this screen here the hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on graham he must drink and soon and if we go west of here There's still nothing. So if we go a screen to the left of here, uh, it will kill us. So if we go to the north. Okay. So this is this is the bandit camp. And the way you find this is pretty much exactly how I how I did it. You just have to get out the graph paper and and do all this shit. And we're not even done with the desert yet. 
this is this is like half of the desert. So, oh boy. All right. With disgust, Graham looks at a drunken bandit lying face down in the desert sand, completely passed out. Okay. Okay. Let's get some water first. They have this ah, this rock pizza. Life giving water. Cooking. Nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. Can we talk to the camel? I love the, the talking sound effects. Alright. We cannot talk to the camel. Can we talk to the horses? Here's another four animals that we can't talk to with our magic white snake. The bandits would notice if the camel was disturbed. Dang it. <sighs> yeah, we gotta make sure to kick over the motorcycles. Alright, let's let's go hang out with, with the bandits. An intruder! Whoa. <laughs> that wasn't a very smart move, Graham. Okay. Nice going, Graham. All right, can we can we walk in the fire pizza over Pink here? Fire, all but forgotten, has been reduced to a pile of glowing embers. Phew! Holding his nose against the drunken bandit's pungent odor, Graham quickly searches him, but doesn't find anything of importance. All right. There doesn't seem to be any activity within the smaller tent. Okay. Snoring loudly upon a beautiful carpet lies a sleeping bandit. Assorted odds and ends clutter the inside of this small tent, while upon a lovely carpet sleeps another of the despicable renegades. Grab this thing. Taking care to be very quiet, Graham reaches out and takes the staff into his possession. Who are you? A spy! <laughs> that wasn't a very smart move for Graham to make. Nice job, Graham. So you can't get too close to the, the sleepy guy. Taking care to be very quiet. All right, then you gotta go around that. Okay. Might as well drink. Ah, life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. All right, so there's... There's two things we have to get in the desert, I think. If I remember correctly. So we need to have the shoe. We need to... We need to get the stuff in the temple. But I could have sworn there was another thing we needed here. But until we figure that out, I'm just going to head back to the Oasis. So that is... One... Two, three, four... Four to the east. And then one north. And this should be the oasis. Okay. Ah, life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. If we head north or north until we hit the mountains, and then that'll take us to back to the treasure place. 
So yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. There's there's two more oases in the desert here. And I could have sworn there was another item in the desert. Besides the shoe. But I can't remember. The hot sun and choking. Yeah, 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 hot sun. Okay, so here is this. I'm pretty sure you don't have to hide again. Ah. Alright, Desert Temple. Okay, so this next part here. Okay, look at this shoe first. The worn old shoe is cracked and dry from the desert sun. The jeweled staff is obviously the work of an expert craftsman. All right. Open sesame! Oh no! The staff broke! All right. Look at all this cool treasure. Treasure? Treasure piled everywhere. The sparkling brilliance of it overwhelms Graham as he peers around the temple's dim interior. A single gold coin, separated from the rest of the treasure, lies on the floor near the door. Okay. Near the temple door sits an old, tarnished brass bottle. Let's go get this treasure. Hurry! The exit door is about to close. Oh, well. Cheer up, Graham. At least you can practice your game of tiddlywinks. Tiddly winks. Open sesame. Oh no, the staff broke. Bending down, Graham hurriedly picks up the gold coin from the temple floor. Quickly, Graham grabs the old brass bottle. Okay. And then there's nothing that else obvious. Close. Okay. The staff lies in several broken pieces on the temple steps. The staff is broken and is of no use anymore. Okay. All right, I think that's all we have to do in the desert. Ah, life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Okay. All right. Back to Cedric. I I still have. I still get the feeling there is something else I need in the desert, but what it is I can't remember. So, we'll just we'll just keep going until we run into something that that makes me remember that oh we needed this one thing. Uh, so the gold coin is enough for the fortune ta fortune telling from the Madame Bush Babushka or whatever her name is. So get ready for some gypsies. Alright, made it out the desert. It's cartoon time. Well there you are. I was just starting to get concerned. Don't worry about me, Cedric. I'm used to this kind of thing. Yeah. He's used to wandering aimlessly. Alright, warning. This cartoon features... ...things that... ...that information needed to complete this game. It will cost you one gold coin to see Madamushka. Alright, Madamushka. It is a shiny gold coin. This is an old, tarnished brass bottle. Okay. You may see Madame Mushka now. Warning. This cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information or clues to complete this game. Please be sure to check your inventory if you decide to skip. Why would you want to ever skip these, though? That... Oh. You are here to see Mary Mushka, no? 
Well, come closer. Sit down. I will tell you your fortune. Already I can tell that you are on a quest of great urgency. We will see what we can find out for you. Look, King Ram. Look into the crystal ball. Look, Mananan. Look what I have for you. Mananan. Take a good look at what you did to my brother, Alexander. Because of you, he's doomed to spend the rest of his days as a cat, and there's nothing I can do about it. But you can do something about it. Since you're the one that did this to him, you're the only one who can turn him back again. Back to the wizard, Mananan. Alexander! I don't know how, Mordek. I'm not a wizard. I just happened to stumble across some magic spells and accidentally turned your brother into a cat. Accidentally. I didn't mean it. Please believe me, Mordek. I don't know how to turn him back into a wizard. You're holding out on me, little man. You're taking advantage of my good nature, but not for long. If I don't get a change of tune from you soon, I'll feed your family to the cat. Starting with your dear mother. <laughs> Remember what I said. I'll only give you a little more time to decide before your family becomes cat food. That is all. But I see that your mission is very dangerous indeed. I will give you something to help you. Here, where is it? It is a magic amulet. It will protect you against all but the most powerful magic. Good luck, King Ram. Be careful. That Mordek is a bad one. Thank you, Madam Mushka. Okay. So, yeah, if if you recall from our King's Quest 3 playthrough, when we were playing as Prince Alexander, we turned Mananin into a cat. About halfway through the game. And that is that has come back to haunt us. Madam Mushka is tired. No more for today. All right. Okay. So if we go back to the gypsy screen, they're still there. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. A graceful weeping willow tree grows beside a small pond created from her tears. In her branch-like arms, she clutches a beautiful harp as a child would a cherished toy. Her tears? Uh, Miss Willow? Yes? You can talk? Why, of course I can. What did you expect? Well, uh, I've never seen a talking tree before. What's wrong? Everything's wrong, can't you tell? I'm not really a tree. I'm really a princess. You see, my fiancé and I were walking through this wood when a nasty old witch came along and was instantly charmed by my handsome prince. When he naturally refused her advances, she jealously banished him to a faraway land and turned me into a tree. Then she stole my heart. Stole your heart? Yes. She turned my heart to gold and took it away with her. The only way I can become human again is to have my heart brought back. Now, all I have to cheer me up is my harp. It's quite magical, you know. It plays the sweetest music you've ever heard. Oh. Now please, leave me alone in my sorrow. Oh, what a sad song she plays. Let's try to cheer her up, Graham. I had no idea that was in the game. That uh, there was an actual digitized song. Okay. The sign seems self-explanatory enough. Enter at your own risk. 
An old hollow log lies in a small clearing before the gloomy forest. Back to the east is Crispin's house. Thanks, Cedric. It's on my map that that is where Cedric's house is. Wizard's house. Sure. Uh, so this is this is clearly a dangerous place. So forest entrance. Okay. The amulet is attached to a soft leather thong. I see. All right. Can we use this sweet lamp? Freedom at last! Now you spend the next 500 years in a bottle. Graham should know better than to keep things bottled up inside. Alright. So we can't use that. Okay. Ooh, no! Ooh, I'm not going in there! Can't you read the sign? Come on, Cedric. There might be something important in here. Go if you want to. I'll wait here. Come on, Cedric. It seems to Graham that there is an unusually large number of toads in this forest. All right. Sure. Yeah, Cedric is... He's not the most courageous owl. Oh, man. Strange plants and animals inhabit this dark and dreary place, while thin rays of sunlight barely break the surface of the forest's thick foliage. It's the Sarlacc. A large, rock-like creature blocks further passage to the west. Okay. That old witch caught Graham <laughs> totally off guard. Yeah, this is this is the screen from the the box. You're right. Okay, so in order to not get blown up by the witch, you have to do this. I think the magic amulet begins to glow softly as Graham slips it over his head. He then carefully tucks the amulet into the front of his tunic, hiding it from sight. Yeah, so you have to you have to equip the amulet on yourself. To Graham's great relief, it appears that the witch's magic has been stopped by the amulet he is wearing, just as Madame Mushka said it would. Of all the ugly hags Graham has seen in his life, this is by far the ugliest. Okay. What are you doing in my forest, young man? <laughs> Don't you know you're trespassing? <laughs> oh, I didn't know this was a private forest. Do you own it? Of course I own it. <laughs> it's mine. And what did you do to my magic? Huh? I don't think you need to know. Now tell me <laughs> something. How does one leave this confusing forest? I'll never tell. <laughs> I'm afraid you're stuck, dearie. <laughs> now you're my prisoner. We'll see about that. <laughs> yes, won't we? <laughs> All right, so if you... So here's what happens if you... 
try and leave the forest. So we went to the left, but we're back on this screen. And now we're we're over here. So if we go north to the house. So we're still at our house screen. If we go south again. Okay, this is this is actually working as it should. But if we go left. And this is where the entrance to the forest would be, right? So if we went right from here, this is not the entrance to the forest. <laughs> so if you if you enter the forest with the amulet, but without without this, though you you should have both, right? Um, it's a soft lock. What's this? Freedom at last! Now you spend the next 500 years in a bottle. Good. That old witch won't be seen here for a long time. But now, how to get out of this dreadful forest? Okay, so that's... That's how you get rid of the witch, at least. And then, so you're you're still kind of stuck in the forest, but now we can go to the witch's house, and there's the Shenmue door sound. Okay. So no no audio plays in here for some reason. I think Graham spies a small drawer built into the trunk of a tree, which pokes awkwardly through the wall of the house. A small leather pouch is tucked away in the drawer. Graham reaches the drawer and removes the leather pouch. And then you got to kind of pay attention here. So right on this lantern thing on the left side of it. There is a pixel, there's three pixels that are different, that light up. And you have to notice that, that there's three pixels that light up. What's this? Why, it's a little key. It's a little key, huh? A small, intricate spinning wheel is put away in the trunk. Okay. Spinning wheel. Reaching a hand into the trunk, Graham retrieves the small spinning wheel. Okay. Go upstairs. The old witch's house has been crudely fashioned from an old tree trunk and salvaged stone. Being cold and creepy, Graham finds he would just as soon hurry up and leave. The old witch's house has been crudely so yeah, there's there's multiple instances in this game where there are crucial items you need to get that the only tell for them being there is like sometimes one pixel is different. In this case, it was three pixels, um, which in in the case of the earlier King's Quest games, you could at least do a look around command and it would kind of it would describe something as being different. But in this game, if you don't spot it, then you got no no luck of getting it. A small door built into the trunk of a large twisted tree catches Graham's attention. Okay. Graham tugs firmly on the door in the tree, but finds it securely locked. All right, securely locked. Uh, which is why we need that key right there. Graham finds that the little key fits perfectly in this lock. Graham is charmed to find a little golden heart inside the door of the twisted old tree. Okay. Let's so get our chocolate heart. Reaching into the little door of the tree, Graham extracts the little golden heart. Okay. All right. So we got pretty much everything we need in the forest, but now we got to escape the forest. And 
going left here normally would have let us left leave the forest, but we got nothing right now. So this is another instance where if you came to the forest unprepared, you would soft lock here. You'd just be stuck. So we, we got some eyes back here in the background. Strange plants and animals inhabit this dark and dreary place while thin rays of sunlight barely break the surface of the forest's thick foliage. So, if we open this... Upon opening the leather pouch, Graham discovers three sparkling emeralds. Alright, three emeralds. So, if we drop the emeralds on the ground... Drat. Just missed him. Drat. So if if you did that, that's a death. That there's no escaping the forest from there. It, it's not an official death in terms of like the game giving you a game over screen, but it is a death. So what you're actually supposed to do is if you're supposed to come into the, the forest with the honeycomb. Because you have to use the honeycomb on the ground like Graham this. squeezes the honeycomb as hard as he can, which causes the honey to drip out of it onto the ground, creating a sticky little puddle at his feet. Now all that's left of the honeycomb is a piece of beeswax, which Graham puts back in his pocket. And then... Upon opening the leather pouch, Graham discovers three sparkling emeralds. And then you do this. So, like, King's Quest 1 had a few soft locks. King's Quest 2 had, like, one. Three, like, the whole first half of the game was a soft lock, essentially, because of the wizard stuff. Please, let me go. I beg of you. But Why this game, do that? Man. What will you do for me? I'll show you the way out of the forest. If you let me go. How do I know I can trust you? I give you my word. An elf never breaks his word. Well, it's against my better judgment, but okay. Move over, Rocky. You're in our way. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. Right. Follow me! In here! Alright. Warning. This cartoon contains information you need to, to beat the game. Warning. This cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information or clues to complete this game. Please be sure to check your inventory if you decide to skip. I never take anything without giving in return. For your generosity in giving me those exquisite emeralds, I give you my finest pair of shoes. May they help you in your quest. Follow that passage over there. It's the way out of the dark forest. Thank you very much for all your help. I'm sure I'll be able to find a use for these fine shoes. Yeah, Graham is, is kind of jacked. I was thinking that too. <laughs> Jesus.
doesn't look like it in this in this uh, far away sprite. But man, the close-up King Graham. Oh, I'm glad to see you're okay. I was beginning to worry. You were right not to want to venture in that dark forest, Cedric. I thought I'd never get out of there alive. All right, course complete. So, so we got the the heart back for the willow, but we gotta go see what's up with this guy first. Uh, excuse me, young man. Sorry to bother you, but I couldn't help but notice you sitting there on that log. I was wondering if there was anything wrong. Why, yes. As a matter of fact, there is. I've been searching everywhere for my fiancé. She's a beautiful princess with long golden tresses, fetching blue eyes, and smooth, creamy skin. Have you seen her anywhere about? Nope. No, sorry, I haven't seen anyone like that. Can't say they have. That's what I figured. No one has seen her. I bet that a witch who lives in the dark forest had something to do with her disappearance. I'll keep an eye out for her. If I see her, I'll let her know you're looking for her. I would appreciate that. Well, I guess I'd better get back to looking for her. I'm not ever going to find her just sitting around here. Thanks for your concern. Oh, and then he does leave. Interesting. I thought he just sits there and mopes for the game. Okay, so we haven't uh, we haven't been to the screen to the left of us. The screen south of here is the bakery. An old grandfather gnome sits contentedly on an old stump and smokes a large pipe while watching his grandson at play. Okay. Sitting on a stool in front of his house, a young gnome happily plays with an exquisite marionette. Cedric is too busy looking around and doesn't seem to be paying any attention to Graham at the moment. Excuse me, sir. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to bother you. I was just noticing your son's marionette. It's very interesting. Where did you get it? Sure. It's grandson, not son. And I made it for him. Why do you care? <laughs> I just wanted to comment on its artistry. It's very well done. I don't suppose it could be bought. If it could, the price would be very steep. I reckon you couldn't afford it. Now, leave me and my grandson be. Don't talk to me or my grandson ever again. Graham attempts to speak to the young gnome, but the boy seems to be very shy and doesn't answer. Alright, do we have anything that we could barter? Would you like this old boot? I don't take charity, young man. I got everything I need. Where did you get this? I thought I had lost it. Oh, is it yours? I found it in the old witch's house in the dark forest. <laughs> okay. So that's where it got to. The old hag took it, eh? You know, this ain't an ordinary spinning wheel. It's not? Well, what's so special about it? Why, this spinning wheel can spin straw into gold, that's what. Except you gotta know who to use it. I doubt even the witch could figure that out. Thank you for bringing it back to me. Now wait, not so fast. How about that marionette? Don't you think the price of the spinning wheel is worth at least twice that of the puppet? I'd love to have it. Yeah, I guess so. Boy, give that marionette to the man here. I'll make you a new one. Come on, boy. Let's gather up some wood for a new puppet. Good. Swag walk out of there. Okay. All right. We got a heart just for you. My heart. You found it.
I don't need this old thing anymore. Look at me, I'm a princess again. Herbert! Alicia! Well, Graham has the, the chest of unlimited gold already at Daventry. Where have you been all this time, my love? So naturally, oh, he doesn't need it. Just take me home. I'll tell you on the way. That's, that's one of the three treasures of Daventry. Come on, Hidden. Pay attention, man. Come on. He doesn't need to spin straw into gold. He just goes now, over to his chest. Now, why would toss aside this beautiful harp? Well, if she doesn't want it, I'll take it. Roberta put together all this hot lore. Uh, save tree. This original story, do not steal. Uh, okay, so we got... It is a small harp of beautifully carved mahogany. Okay. Uh, so I think at this point, if we go over to this screen... Yeah, okay. And then... A tambourine lies on the ground near the abandoned gypsy encampment. Okay. Free tambourine. It's not nailed down, so therefore... Not seeing the tambourine's owner, Graham bends down and rescues it from the ground. Ah, he rescued it. Sure. Okay. Uh, so this is the elf screen. I don't think there's anything more we can do with the ants for now. So... So I'm pretty sure if we go to the inn right now... Oh yeah, there's also, there's also this. I'm not sure how you would ever know to do this in the game, besides having the hint book or clicking everything, but this is a thing. Graham watches with surprise as a contingent of ants marches into the haystack and begins to swarm through it. Get ready for this jam. There was a way that we could be of help to you. Look here. We found a golden needle in the haystack. I'd like to present it to you. Perhaps you can find a use for it. Why, thank you, King Antony. I'm honored. Good luck in your travels, King Graham. And be careful. Okay. Got a golden needle. This is a large golden needle. All right, so the the three shops in town. You think a gold needle, probably for the tailor, a really nice toy for the toy shop, and some sweet shoes for the shoe shop. And now, I mentioned soft locks earlier. Get ready for. Probably one of the dumbest ones in the game. So, I'm going to load up one of the early saves that we did. So, let's say on the bear screen here. So this is after, after we save the bear and all we have is a stick, a pie, honeycomb, and a wand. Okay? I'm going to turn the speed up here. All right, so I'm gonna walk back this way. So this is like right at the beginning of the game. So say you're just wandering around, wandering around the town in early King's Quest V. So we're back in front of the bakery again. And we're walking this way. And I Suddenly, frantic squeakings alert Graham to a mangy cat chasing a terrified rat. 
So there's a cat chasing a rat. So there's the bakery cat chasing the rat there. This is at the very beginning of the game. So the cat ca catches the rat and then runs off. So if that happened and you weren't prepared for it, it's a soft lock. And this can happen right at the beginning of the game and you'd never know it until you needed to to advance the plot. That right there is a soft lock. <laughs> so what you actually have to do is do the entire uh, part in the desert. You have to get the shoe in the middle of the desert, just like literally in the middle of the desert. This random shoe in the desert. And then have it with you as you're here. Suddenly... Frantic squeakings alert Graham to a mangy cat chasing a terrified rat. And then you have to take this old shoe and throw it at the cat. Oh, thank you, thank you, good sir. You saved my life. My children and I will never forget your kindness. Maybe someday I'll be able to return the favor. Oh, I hear my children calling. Goodbye. Until we meet again. So we saved the rat. The rat is now our friend. But if you didn't do that and you didn't know that was a thing, have fun. So this is why a blind playthrough this game is just... I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Because there are so many situations in this game where, where you can't progress the plot and you'd never know it. Until you were just completely stuck later in the game. And it, it's so stupid. Alright. So now that we did that. So now that we saved the rat. So here's the purpose of why we saved the rat. So now. If we go into here. Ooh, I'll wait for you out here. I don't like that place. The th you know that job we pulled you? Yeah, okay. So we've already heard this. Rub them out. Diana's full ain't got no more rooms. Hey boss, this guy looks like a real troublemaker. What do you want me to do with him? Rub him out. Rub him out. Okay. So we have as he might. Graham could not escape his bonds. So we've already seen this before. But here's the difference. So because we saved the rat, this happens. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Graham stoops down and picks up the sturdy rope from the stone floor. Okay. Graham has unfortunately found himself locked in the Country Inn's dusty, dirty cellar. A rusty padlock securing the door prevents Graham from leaving the cellar. Oh, that's right. We... A rusty padlock... We also can't can't do this yet either. So I did this out of order, and this is this is also a soft lock. So we don't have anything in our inventory to deal with the the padlock. <laughs> so that that is that is a death. So the I don't think the game even tells you, but. Uh, but that's a soft lock. You, you can't escape that room. All right. So what we need to do now is go back into town. Like that's that's how wild the soft locks are in this game. Like I can't even remember all of them. <laughs> that's how bullshit this game is. <laughs> all right. May I help you, sir? Does this count as playability? <sighs> Not really. Uh, and also, I think just a normal playthrough of this game is a 100% playthrough, I think. My golden needle! Wherever did you find it? It was in a haystack by the country inn. By the inn? Oh yes, I remember visiting there not long ago. Oh vulgar man, that innkeeper. 
He has no scruples at all. Well, I'm glad to see you've got your golden needle back. I wonder, could you possibly see fit to give me that wonderful cloak in exchange for it? The cloak? Well, why not? It's yours. For the price of a golden needle. Thank you, kind sir. I'm sure it will help me on my travel. I'm sure it will. Good luck. Au revoir. Yeah, we've gotten like three shurs in one scene. Five shurs total, just from the tailor. Okay, so that's uh, the tailor done. Come on in, look around. Let me know if you're interested in anything. All right, so the giveaway here is that there's marionettes and she likes dolls. So, marionette. Look in the trunk upstairs. I think I put them there. Oh, I must have clicked exactly when there was a line that guy said. I'll do that. Uh. All right, I'm going to click. So I think I, something screwed up because I, I clicked... I used the item right on the guy when the other guy appeared, so... Grandpa? Yeah, my darling? Can I keep this doll? I really like her. Now, Katrina, you know these toys are for sale for other kinder. Besides you... Okay, All right, we've Grandpa. already heard this. I'll so, it, it, it's not a long pause, it's that the game glitched. Because I was... I used the item at the same time as an event oh, happening. Oh, did you get this wonderful <laughs> marionette? The craftsmanship? It's excellent! Well, I don't know if you'll believe me or not, but I got it from a little gnome. I must have it! Can I buy it from you? Actually, you may have it if you'll give me the sled in trade. Why, of course! But I must tell you, I think I'm getting the better deal. I, I can always make another sled, but finding another marionette of this quality... Ich. Vice Nick. So, can I have the sled? Yeah, yeah, take it, it's yours. Oh, we're starting to get the... Thank you very much. I think I'll find this sled very useful. The noise in the left audio well, channel. You enjoy it, and danke for the marionette. So I, I know how to fix the noise now, but I need to turn my computer off and pull a wire in order to fix that. And it'll also it's you again, is it? We still don't have any shoes for sale. Uh it'll also mess up um the the audio for something else. Okay. Uh how can I fix that? Let's see. So I think I had to switch it to away from digital. All right, we'll, we'll do this on the fly. So let's plug in this into speaker. Um, change this to feed three. And then I need to mute. All right, we'll, we'll save this. So here, you can, you can probably hear it in the left audio channel here. There's like this this kind of rustling sound going on. That's actually a ground loop happening. Do you really? In my PC. So I need to go into here and then set this to analog. Okay. And then I need to mute toss link. Okay. And then we should be good on audio now okay because i don't i don't particularly want to listen to that wrestling sound it's probably way louder for me than it is for you guys but i don't want to listen to it okay so i'll switch back to the analog audio not that it's that big of a difference so we can't hear this this compressed to hell Voices. Have you previously played King's Quest V? Okay, everything else is still good, and we're not getting the the rustling sound in the left channel anymore. Okay. Okay. 
So the cobblers. Give me. What have we here? Mama, take those shoes from the young man. Let me see them. These are the finest pair of shoes I've ever seen. The leather is soft and pliable, yet sturdy. The craftsmanship of these shoes are superb. And Mama, look at the solid gold buckle. Why, well, I could retire from the sale of these shoes. Then the shoes are yours. I don't think I could find a better use for them. You are a god, says young man. How can we ever repay you? You don't need to repay me. Just knowing I helped you is enough for me. <laughs> uh. Well, it ain't much, but it's all I've got to give. Here, take my cobbler's hammer. Perhaps you can find a use for it. Since I'll be retiring, I won't need it anymore. Thanks to you. Why, thank you. A hammer could be very useful on my journey. Maybe. Maybe there's an Take old lock. Care, young man. We'll never forget this. That's right, son. We'll finally be able to retire in comfort. You'll be in our hearts from now on. Come on, Mama, let's go home. Let's celebrate our good fortune. Oh, when the dog leaves too. Can't pet the dog. So yeah. Yeah, that... <sighs> it's it's kind of weird when they... When they move this game to a cursor based in interface, it it lost the flexibility that the older games in the series had for solutions to puzzles. And any sort of like creativity you could have used for, for things. So I I know it was still a limited amount of solutions for things, but it it felt like there was more player agency in um like solving puzzles and all that. So here, we're back here again. Ooh, wait for you. So we, we had to save the rat and then we had to get the cobbler's hammer. This thing. A cobbler would normally use this small hammer to make shoes. Oh, that made the music, it set the music down to zero for some. <laughs> you know that job? Okay. Diana's. Hey boss, this guy looks like a real troublemaker. What do you want me to do with him? Rub him out. Okay. Struggle as he might, Graham could not escape his bonds. Well, yeah, that's that's the thing. Like the with using the sword on the snake in this game, all you can do with that is select the sword from your inventory and then click on the snake. <laughs> Um, and then save for like, like the the board thing in in King's Quest IV. Graham stoops down. Like in this game, you would just go in your inventory, select the board, and then just click. But in in King's Quest IV, the Pairs of Rizal, you had to specifically say lay board. You can't do use board or put board. It's got to be lay board. And that's something that you're you're missing in something like this. Okay, so here's why we need the hammer. Using the cobbler's hammer, Graham pounds on the rusty padlock until it breaks apart. Okay. Alright, and then... And then in here... Okay. So the entire reason that you want access to this area? Inside the cupboard, Graham sees a large, juicy leg of lamb. It is for this. Reaching into the open cupboard, Graham pulls out the savory leg of lamb. Oh, and also the rope, too. Which I think I picked up, yeah. Okay, so... Now that we got that... If we go back into here... Hey, guys! We gotta plan our next job, you guys. Hey! How did you get out of the cellar? Rub them out. This time, rub them out for good. That wasn't a very smart move. <laughs> and you get bonked. Okay. 
That's why you gotta go out through the back door. Cause Finding the kitchen door locked, Graham unlocks it before going outside. Okay, so we got that and the rope. Okay. So with all that complete, that's, uh, I think that's everything you can do in, in the town. I, I'm, I still can't shake the feeling that there's something I forgot to do in the desert. And I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll find out at like the end of the game probably, but sure. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right. So I'm I'm still pretty sure that the snake can talk to you. So if we a large venomous snake blocks Graham's passage to the east. I could have sworn the snake goes like stay away or something like that. Stay away. This is my path. Yeah, okay, yeah, you have to use the hand icon on it. And if you hit, say talk. In silence, the large serpent eyes Graham menacingly. Yeah, so for some reason, the, the talk command doesn't let you talk to the snake. Stay away. And you have to use the hand command. That's got to be a bug. Um, all right, snake, would you like... Would you like this sled? That won't convince the snake to leave. Snake, how would you like a pie? That won't convince the snake to leave. Okay. All right, how about this? So there's three items here that look pretty much the same. So this tambourine, the pie, and then the honeycomb. Sure. Be gone, you slithery varmint. Scat! <laughs> so, yep. Snakes are afraid of tambourine music. Sure. Okay, so that leaves the path clear. Head into the mountains. A few hours later. All right, a few hours later in the mountains. Graham begins to shiver at the sudden drop in temperature. So it's very cold in the mountains, so we got shivering Graham. Oh, we can't fall off the, the ledge there. What about here? No! Stay away from the edge! Ah! <laughs> oh, oh, that last step was a doozy. We get extremely loud Graham scream. hours later all right so Graham is cold but we're not gonna do anything about that right Graham now begins to shiver at the sudden drop in temperature yep some good old classic Sierra will wake you all right up that should be your your text notification all right up the path Okay. All right. So clearly we got to get up there. The remains of an old tree poke out of the mountainside near an upper ledge. Graham notices a rock overhang near an upper ledge. Cedric seems to be quietly contemplating their current situation and so is not inclined to indulge in conversation right now. I see. All right. What if we climb on up there? Oh. Well, Graham, how does it feel to be a popsicle? <laughs> sure. Alright, so in order to Graham. to fix the being cold problem, we needed this from the tailor. Graham dons his warm cloak for protection against the freezing mountain air. 
but we got our, our Lando cape on. This can hold no more save games, okay? Not a valid directory. God. Uh. Alright, hold up. I gotta alt-tab out, go to my save directory, and then make a... So these are all the save files. Kick you 5 sg dot all those. Uh, we need new folder. Let's make one, and then just in case we need another one. Sure. There we go. All right, mounts in. Okay. So, clearly we need to use the rope on this obvious tree over here, which looks very sturdy. Oh, be careful, Graham! Thanks for playing King's Quest V. <laughs> so you don't even get a fanfare, it's just, well... You done did it. All right, it's this one. Graham notices his stomach beginning to rumble with hunger from the exertion of the mountain climb. Okay. I'm sure we'll be okay, though. Oh, be careful, Graham! All right. Cedric is too busy. Cedric is too busy. All right. And then this amazing part here. So you got to click. No, stay away from the edge. Ah! Uh oh, that <laughs> last step was a doozy. It just, it gave up playing the music, it sounds like. So it's, it's, you gotta click the top of it? No, stay away from the edge! Uh. Ah! Uh oh, <laughs> that last step was a doozy. It's, it's this one? No, stay away from the edge! <laughs> ah! Uh oh, that <laughs> last step. Alright, maybe we're supposed to eat first. All right, so we have this sweet custard pie, and we've also got this leg of lamb. Graham finds the leg of lamb a bit tough, but tasty enough. Filling up quickly, he saves the other half for later. All right, so we, we ate half of the, the leg of lamb. We'll save there. Maybe it's the hand icon? Ooh, do be careful, Graham. Okay. All right, we did it. Okay. Did it. Now. Cedric! Okay, so... Here is a, a screen that is potentially problematic. So I remember the game used to crash right here. So this is this is what we need the sled for, by the way. So let's let's see what happens if we follow the, the wolf down here. Okay. Step was a doozy. So, hey, if only we had a sled to. 
Also, I just noticed that Cedric's um, palette changes when he gets eaten by the wolf. All right. So we have to use the sled here. And the game might crash. Hopefully it doesn't, but it might. At the end of the sled ride, it, it, it used to crash. Back in the day. So not only would Graham crash, but... My sled is broken. But so would the game. Okay, we good. Alright. Hey. Okay. Graham's sled lies in several broken pieces on the eastern side of the icy crevasse. Alright, so here's this... Here's this eagle. A shivering eagle perches weakly upon a small rock. Despite his own problems, Graham's heart goes out to the poor thing. What's wrong, Mr. Uh, eagle? <laughs> I'm so weak from hunger. I haven't been able to catch any food for days. I can barely fly anymore. I'd like to help you. Let me see what I can do. <coughs> Thank you. I need food. So, if you ate all of your leg of lamb, this is a soft lock. If you give the eagle the custard pie, which I think is something you can do. Here, take this. Yeah. Perhaps it will help you. <laughs> so, this is a soft lock. If you give the eagle the pie, which the game lets you do... You are a kind man to share your meager food with a poor bird, especially up here in these snowy mountains. Well, I couldn't just stand there and let you starve to death. What kind of person would I be? You have shown yourself to be a kind, compassionate man, and I will not forget what you did for me. Goodbye, dear friend. Okay. So, right there, that is... That's a soft lock. If you give the eagle your custard pie, you'll see why later. Um, and if you... If you ate both halves of the leg of lamb before this part, then... That is... It's game over, and you wouldn't know it until much later. You have to give the eagle this. this. Perhaps it will help you. You are a kind man to show your meager. Alright, it's, it's the same dialogue, so we'll just skip that. Alright, so we saved the eagle. Now we've got this area. I am Queen Isabella, and you have entered my domain now. I command you to kneel before me. Since both you and your friend over there have so thoughtlessly invaded my territory without my permission or knowledge, I have decided you shall both be put to death. Take him away, my pet. Alright. So you, you have access to your inventory for this part here. And if you don't do anything until right there... It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there then that happens. So luckily the the game kind of indicates that you could do something there, but you do have to figure it out. So, if you made it this far Queen Isabel, without a certain item, my domain now. then it's I GG. But this isn't you and your this isn't a dead man walking at have least. So thoughtlessly invaded my territory without my permission or knowledge. I have decided you shall both be put to death. Take him away, my pet. Actually it kind of is, so it's right here. This. Warning. This cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information or clues to complete this game. Please be sure to check your inventory if you decide to skip. Alright. Wait, my pet.
That was very lovely music. I've never heard anything quite that beautiful before. I think I felt my heart melting. Just a little bit. Just enough, that is, to allow you a chance for your freedom. A vicious Jenny has entered the area and taken up residence in my prized crystal cave. So far, I have been unable to extricate him from either the cave or my territory. If you can rid me of the Yeti, I will release both you and your owl friend, and you two can continue on your journey unhindered. You may rise now. I wish you luck in defeating the Yeti. If you succeed, you will have my undying gratitude. Go with him, Sir Grey Wolf. Show him the way to the Crystal Cave. You may go now. Sir Grey Wolf will lead the way. All right. And we get Yoda voice wolf coming out. Yonder's the crystal cave. There you will find the Yeti. Yep, we got a new animal, bro. Okay. We talked to him some more. Sir Wolf, I don't know how you expect me to conquer a Yeti. Why, he's got to be at least twice as big as me and much, much more powerful. What do you expect me to do? That is your problem, not mine. It has been decreed by Queen Isabella, and I must carry out her wishes. Now, no more talking. Go to the Crystal Cave. All right, can we, can we get past the Savage Grey Wolf stubbornly blocks Graham's passage back to the Ice Queen's palace. Graham's only option is to go toward a distant cave where the dreaded Yeti can be found. The Savage... Okay. All right. So. What an abominable situation Graham has found himself in. Okay. So, this is why you needed this pie. This custard pie from the from practically the start of the game. So if you if you happen to eat the pie at the beginning of the game when you got it, you wouldn't know it was game over until you got here. Likely multiple hours into your playthrough. Because you get here, and then the Yeti would just murder you over and over again. <laughs> okay. Into the cave. Brilliant crystals flashing and sparkling and reflecting off the numerous waterfalls caused Graham to gaze in awe and wonderment at the dazzling spectacle before him. I really like this screen. I don't know why, but this might be one of my, my favorite screens in in the, all the Sierra games. So. I just really like this game. Pretty sweet. One particularly brilliant crystal catches Graham's attention among all the other glittering crystals in the cave. All right. So this this particular crystal... Actually, can we... He just slaps at it. <laughs> as strong as he is. Even Graham can't break the stubborn crystal with his bare hands. All right, so King Graham is jacked, but not that jacked because he can't he can't break crystal with his bare hands. So very gently, Graham hits the beautiful crystal several times with his hammer until it breaks loose in one piece. He then carefully places it among his other possessions. Okay. That's what we need there. And then you gotta be very careful not to fall off the ledge at this part. Which is definitely can happen. 
I see that the Yeti is dead. Queen Isabella will be pleased. Come, follow me. Warning, this cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information or clues to complete this game. The two cartoons in like five minutes. Ah, good. You have returned in victory, I presume. Yes, your majesty. The Yeti is dead. He will no longer be a scourge upon your realm. Are my friend and I free to go now? Yes. I keep my promises. I want to thank you for ridding my mountain domain of the horrible Yeti. Please rise, King Graham. Yes, I know who you are, and I have been informed of your quest. I do wish you luck against the wizard Mordak. You too may go. We wish you well on your difficult journey. Sir Grey Wolf will show you the way out of the mountains. Okay. It's south of here, I think. Talk to Wolf again. Graham's duty's done. The large gray wolf now sits in silence, blocking the passage back to the Ice Queen's palace. Yeah. Oh, miss. Ooh, will we ever find our way out of these mountains, Graham? I don't know, Cedric. I'm beginning to wonder. <laughs> ah, she'll never notice. She'll never notice. Graham, watch out! A poisonous snake. Okay, so this is another point where if you if you don't do something here, it's a soft lock way later in the game. Right here, this thing. Graham rescues a lovely golden locket from the leafy clutches of the rock's nest. So you need to get that locket because reasons. And then Here's another potential soft lock situation. Uh, nice birdie. Good birdie. <laughs> uh, Gucci, Gucci, goo. Hang on, I'll get you out of this. So if you didn't feed the eagle before, you just die here. <laughs> so that's a death we won't be seeing because I'm I'm not gonna redo that whole section. Oh no! Ah, <laughs> uh, classic. Classic DOS games. Alright, somebody's leaning on the, the keyboard here. Alright, we got our first crash of, uh. of. of DOS games. Okay. Oh, the, the sound blaster crashed, I think. Okay. I'm not sure if we're if we're going to have sound blaster here or not. Yeah, welcome to classic classic gaming on real hardware. This is what happens. <laughs>
Classic gaming on real hardware. Actually, I think it's just straight up, straight up crashed here. Yep. Okay. So this is, this is when we hit control alt delete, uh, and task. So it, it completely crashed the, crash the sound card and all that so you can you can see how long it takes to boot a uh, a windows windows 98 circa 1999 computer now let's put on some uh some music here so you can see the amazing boot process yeah i always had to restart yeah that's that's what i have to do too so you can see just how long it takes for, for Windows 98 uh, to boot. It takes forever on my machine, and it takes even longer because I um, I have a network card in it, and it tries to look for um, the network stuff while it's booting too. So, yeesh. This is, this is what classic computing used to be like, though. That was actually pretty quick. That was quicker than usual. Yeah, I, I also do not miss the boot times. This is also booting off of an SSD, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I have an SSD in this thing. So there's um there's actually adapters that you can get for... Um, so old, old hard drives used to be IDE uh, prior to serial ATA. And um, for about 15 or so bucks, you can actually get a little a little board that you plug in IDE into. And then you can either have it output to a SATA connector, so you can just slap an S, a, a regular SSD in there, or you can have it on an SD card. So you can have an SD card reader as your your solid state hard drive in your uh, old classic computer. Um, so I uh, that's how I have this set up. And you can also do a similar thing with um, floppy drives. You can use something called a floppy drive emulator to uh, to do that. Okay, so see, we, we don't have the message anymore about our sound hardware is missing, so. Now we just have to hope the game doesn't crash after the eagle thing, and I think what I have to do to, to get around that is, um, uh, I have to turn down the detail, I think? I got, have you previously played? Yeah, yeah, we played it. So I think this we got to turn down, and then... E save kq5 one okay so this the detail needs to go all the way down we need to get this Graham okay and now hopefully the game doesn't crash I might have to if it uh, nice okay we've heard this hang on All right, come on, King's Quest. You can do it. There we go. Okay. Oh, Graham, where have you been? <laughs> I've been looking all over for you. You'd never believe it, Cedric. You'd never believe it. All right, we made it. <laughs> all right. So we're on the beach now. We got this. Graham notices a rusty iron bar lying on the sand near the bottom of the windy path. Okay. Four. And we got this sweet boat hey, here. Graham, there's a boat here. Maybe we can use it. Sure. So yeah, let's let's use this boat. Pick this boat out to sea. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with this boat. Watch out! There's a hole in the boat. Help! Help! Thanks for playing King's Quest Five. Thanks for playing King's Quest Five. So they have no witty thing to say there about our. 
our sinking boat. So there's a hole in the boat. So naturally, you put some beeswax in it. Firmly, Graham wedges the softened piece of beeswax into the small hole in the boat's hull. Hopefully, the wax will hold and make her seaworthy. Hopefully. Sure. So I believe for this, you only have to go a few screens to the right, but if you if you explore a little bit. Graham, watch out! A poisonous sea monster. That was a nasty sea creature. So yeah, it, it, at least they kill you pretty much right away in this, if you try to go off the beaten path too much. So you can pretty much only go left and right. I think this is how you get to it. No. Okay, it's a screen south. A nasty sea creature. I missed it. Okay. We gotta do go a screen south and then and then to the right. Okay. So I was wondering, I was like, we should have already been to the island by now. And that's because I was off my screen. There we go. Okay, so this was... Ooh, an island! Perhaps we should explore it! Yes, I think we should, Cedric. So this is this is the harpy section. Don't be so picky. So I if we just I'm walk away. To escape, eh? Hate to harp on the subject, but Graham was no match for the vicious harpies. So if you take too long on this screen, hate to harp on the subject, but then they get you. Was no match for the vicious harpies. Don't be so picky. All right. I'm tired of fish. I haven't had a man in months. What's he doing? What's that thing? I don't know, but I want it. So here is another 
another instance of here is one pixel down here this is a required required plot thing and it is one pixel like sure it does it does sparkle but there is a one pixel item that you need here Graham quickly bends down and rescues the fish hook from the ground. So a fish hook. There's that. And then... I think there's something else we needed here, but... Graham! <coughs> Help me! Cedric, where do you herd? Ooh, everywhere! <coughs> Okay. We got our little owl buddy. And then here, here is another, another thing that's required. Graham bends over and picks up the beautifully colored shell. Uh, so wait. Oh man, that, that walking animation <laughs> from far away <laughs> is pretty good. So what was it? Um... So I want to point out, uh, back here in this, so on the back of the box, so this, this scene here was the one with the harpies, and look how enormous Graham is in the, the art on the back of the box, <laughs> like, that, that is clearly not the same, and then here, here's the forest, like, Graham is, <laughs> it's like, like twice as big as he actually is in the game. He's more like this big in the game. So yeah, I wanted to point that out again because that's that's amazing. Uh Okay. Okay, and then since we're we're coming towards the screen on the boat and the islands in the background. So the islands there. So normally when we came to this island we went left to right, but because the island is north of us right now, um we actually need to go south for one screen. And then No? That was a nasty sea creature. Okay. Maybe it is left. Okay, never mind then. Sure. I could have sworn you had to go go down to get back, but all right. It's been a while. Okay, now we got... A crude door has been built into the front of the unusual house. <laughs> Graham pounds on the door, but he finds it bolted from the inside. He can, however, hear activity within. Who knocks on a door like that? Who are you? And what are you doing on my beach? I'm King Graham of Daventry, and I'm on a journey to find the wizard Mordax Island. But I seem to be stuck. I don't know where to go from here. Hey! What's that you say? I just yell at him. Okay, we can't continue talking to him. <laughs> Alright, can we pound on the door again? <laughs> Graham pounds on the door. But he finds it bolted from the inside. He can, however, hear. You still here? Please help me. I need your help. I can't hear you. Can't understand a thing you said. Gotta speak up, boy. Now get out of here. All right. So obviously. We gotta give him this shell. 
Obviously. What's this? Now what were you wanting? My owl friend is hurt. He was wounded by the harpies. Wounded by the harpies, did you say? We'll bring him on into the house. I'll fix him right up. Good as new. Ah, he's a ventriloquist now. Lay him on the bed there. Uh... These poultices should fix the little fella up. Good as new. Don't mind this. I'm sure this is fine. Feeling better already. Tell me, what was in those poultices? My employer would be very interested in them. Hey, what was that? I said, what was in those poultices? My employer would be interested in them. Gifts from the sea, lad. Gifts from the sea. Ain't nothing special. You just gotta know how to use them. I don't think he'd find them particularly interesting. Now, son, what was it you were trying to tell me before? I was trying to find out where the wizard Mordax Island is. He kidnapped my family and is holding them hostage there. I must get to them before it's too late. Oh, I'm right sorry to hear about that. He's a nasty one, that Mordax. I wouldn't want to tangle with him. I tried to talk you out of going there, except I can see you can't leave your poor defenseless family unaided. I can enlist someone who can lead you straight to his island. Follow me outside. Uh oh. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. You can do it. Okay. Pearl, this man needs your help. He needs you to lead him to Mordax Island. It's a real emergency. Mordax holding his family hostage. Pearl can't speak human talk, but she's agreed to help you. Just get on into your boat and follow her. Cedric and I want to thank you for all your help, Mr. Uh... Don't worry about who I am. You just get on over to that there island and take care of your family. Aye, aye, sir. We're off. Come on, Cedric. Yes, yeah, Cedric. So another mermaid. So this is... There's a mermaid in King's Quest 2? And... Can't remember if 3 and 4 had one. Oh no! Watch out for the rock Graham! Brace yourself, Cedric! Are you all right, Cedric? Well, let me see. Oh, I'm fine, Graham. Just a bit ruffled is all. Okay. So for some reason, there is a fish here. A dead fish lies on the sand beach at the foot of the rocky stairs. All right, our second dead fish of the game. Ugh, a dead fish. Well, maybe I can use it. <laughs> All right, this is a, a different dead fish. Phew, this smelly old fish is disgusting. This is King Graham just picking up dead fish all day. Uh. Okay. Oh, I hate to say this, Graham, but uh, I don't like this place at all. I know what you mean, Cedric. All right. Oh, I don't like this place. It's creepy. Eh? Okay. We all right? So we got spooky, spooky eyes of the statues. Two monstrous statues of grotesque, distorted serpents face each other across the narrow trail leading to Mordax Castle. Oh man. Two 
bad. It looks like the eyes have it. Ah. Uh... Sure. All right. So for this, this is what that crystal was for after we defeated the Yeti. Okay. Well, it looks like there's no way in. Let's turn back. Come on, Cedric. Come on, Cedric. Oh. Oh, clearly, there's something over here. And then for some reason he pauses and looks around. Get in. Let's go back now. No, I'll figure this out. All right. So we have this metal bar. Okay. into that dark hole. You don't know what's down there. Well, do you have any better ideas? No, uh, mind if I wait for you here? No, that's a good idea, Cedric. You be the lookout out here. But yes, who will be the lookout? Who will be careful, Graham? All right, and then... What we got here is a maze. We got the Mordak maze. So this is top tier King's Quest gameplay. So at the start, we'll just call that S. We have a wall to our right. Um, forward is a wall there. There's a wall there. And it looks like it goes off like that. So you kind of have to go by what you see from your perspective here. And that's that's kind of the information that they give you. So say if we if we go like this, we're now actually facing this way forward. So that's this is kind of the the really annoying part of um of this part of the game is that now there is a, a wall to the left of us, a wall here, here, and it looks like there's a wall going up that way. Oh God. Uh, all right. I'm sure we'll be fine. So my map is already wrong, I think. <laughs> uh. A huge beast sporting a fluffy top knot bound in a crude hairpin on top of his head skulks in one dark corner of the labyrinth. Watch his step around this ugly beast. <laughs> Shouldn't play around with Dink, Graham. All right. How would you like this tambourine? the hairpin off the labyrinth floor. Alright. 
Well, that was for the hairpin, which is this apparently. The hairpin is made of a carved piece of bone with a sharp metal clip attached to it. Why do we? Because King's Quest. Obviously. Okay, so now we gotta find our way out of the maze. So it was, it was this, and then this, and then this, where we started was here? So that's where we started, but we weren't facing this way. We were facing to the left, I think. Okay. There's this and this. If we turn left, that is a dead end. Right there. So if we turn around, go right, left, uh, where we started, and then this way. So I think it's not that way. I'm pretty sure it's it's over here. Or it's over here. been a while. Follow the left hand rule. This is this is going to be a preview of my Fantasy Star series playthrough by the way. Get hype. Oh God. And also Ultima. <laughs> the Ultima games. Going to be pretty much this. Okay, well we're we're back where we started. So if we go here and then here, this should be a dead end. Okay, it is. So if we go back to this screen here, we're now facing south. So screen south is on our left is a wall. Past this on our left is a wall. And there's that, and then this, this, and there is an opening to our left. So there's walls on both our sides. Walls here. There. Oh, gee. Oh, God. All right. Straightforward. And then to the right is something. To the left is. What is to the left? So there's. Can't go that way. It's like the door's gotta be like right here. Yeah, there we go. Alright. The nightmare's over. So that's that should be, I think, the only time we have to do that. And then the next time we go through here, we'll have a guide. Okay. So this door. Graham tries to open the wooden door, but to no avail, as it's securely locked. All right, securely locked. So naturally, a hairpin. This ultra secure Mordax castle. All right, and then while we're in here. Inside the cupboard, Graham's eyes fall upon a bag of dried peas. So we need this this bag of dried peas. Don't we worry about it. The open cupboard, 
Graham retrieves the bag of dried peas. Trust me, we need this. Okay. Sure, that, that's kitchen. All right, and then... All right, so here's Kasima. Don't come near me. Leave me alone. I would never hurt you. I'd like to help you. I don't believe you. You're probably one of them. I'm not. Believe me. Just go away. Please. I don't want to talk to you anymore. All right, so if we keep talking to her. Since the girl seems so frightened, Graham compassionately decides to leave her alone for now. For now. So, this is why... It is a lovely golden locket on a delicate chain. So this locket. Upon opening the locket, Graham sees a portrait of an older couple in regal attire. So as not to damage the picture, he quickly closes it again. So... I don't know how you get the idea to try this, but you have to do this. Warning, this cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information or clues to complete this game. Whoa, oh man, she... <laughs> Wherever did you find my gold locket? I thought it was gone for good. I lost it on the island just after I was brought here by Mordak. You wouldn't believe me even if I told you. But tell me, who are you, and how did you come to be here? My name is Princess Cosima, from the Kingdom of the Green Isles. My father, the king, employs a horrible wazir who befriended Mordak. When Mordak saw me, he immediately wished to marry me and bring me here. Naturally, I refused, and my father agreed with me. But our refusal angered him so much that he stole me here anyway and put me to work as a scullery girl. He says he will never let me go. That a scullery girl I will remain until I agree to marry him. But the thought revolts me. What am I to do? Don't worry. I'm here to save my family from the evil wizard. He's got them here someplace imprisoned inside a glass bottle. If I can manage to rescue them, then of course I wouldn't forget you either. I know the glass bottle you're talking about. It's in Mordak's laboratory upstairs. Keep quiet about my presence. Uh, I think this will be the most difficult part of my journey. I may not survive it. I would never give you away. And I will help you in any way I can. She kind of looks like E.T. With her... <laughs> She's got kind of the, the short head now when she gets up. Okay, so she's agreed to help us. Alright, so if we, if we didn't do this interaction with her and you go into the house it's it's a soft lock so you have to do that all right so this this doesn't turn to face you for some reason i thought it's supposed to but oh. the black cat eyes graham suspiciously we talked to the cat you! How did you get here? I have journeyed far, over land and sea. Never mind. Your journey is now over. Alright. Goodbye, King Graham of Daventry. <laughs> Poor Graham. Poor Dak shows no mercy. So, kind of like King's Quest Four. This is random. So in order to progress the plot, we need a random thing to happen here, which is this happening.
All right, so a rat runs into there. Graham can see a small, moldy piece of cheese just inside the mouse hole. Okay. Moldy cheese, huh? So if you don't get the moldy cheese here, with the fish hook, the one pixel thing that you there. had to... Got it. The fish hook did the trick in retrieving the piece of cheese from the mouse hole. So if you didn't get the, the, the fish hook, which was a one pixel item on the, the Harpy Island, it's game over. If you uh, didn't get the cheese from the hole in there uh, after this, before the sequence is over, it's game over. Hello. What? Oh, Princess Cosima, where did you come from? From the labyrinth. I spend a lot of time down here, you know, with my friends. Friends? Yes, like Think and Sam. I don't know if you ever saw Sam or not. Anyway, I found this loose stone once that led here, to this cell. Now come on, you'd better get out of here. And if you didn't talk to Cosima in the kitchens and give her the locket, which... Who would ever think to, to do that? Then it's game over. And luckily you can just follow her back to the house here for this, so you don't have to do all this maze stuff again. Thank you, Roberta, for this this one kindness. That they don't make you do this maze again. Completely blind. Okay, so now this this next part is tricky. Because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So you you need the bag of peas. I'm not sure if I can talk to her. Again. By the way, who are you? <laughs> I'm King Graham of Daventry. I think I know where that is. It's very far from my home, though. Don't worry. Somehow, I'll get you home again. But first, I've got to save my family. Yes, well, <laughs> I'll stand by you, King Graham. I'll help if I can. Thanks. I may need it. Well, I'd better get back to work. And you should keep out of sight. Aye, aye, my lady. All right. So this, this next part drove me kind of crazy when I was speedrunning it. Because this is random. And you got to be really quick with this. I could have sworn that thing up there is supposed to turn to follow you. Okay, so once you hear the music, you gotta... You gotta do that. Okay. So that thing has been taken care of now. So now our next problem is we need to spawn the cat. Which, generally, the cat's in this room. Okay. So, there's our fish. Cats love fish. And then... Gotta put the cat in the bag. Alright. Because otherwise... The cat is going to tell the wizard about us. So we got to put the cat inside the bag. Uh. All right, so over here is, uh, is Mordak's lab. We'll be there later. So this next part here. Oh, geez. Bye. King Graham of Daventry. <laughs> so this is also random. 
uh, don't worry about the screen getting screwed up though. That's that's real hardware coming through, just like LCC said. <laughs> Poor rail. Okay, so so this is this is RNG here. Whether or not Mordak is inside the bedroom or not is random, and he can just he can just kill you at any time. Okay. So uh, trust me when I say that there's a screen down here. There's a door down here. Okay. So now we need to. A large tome lying open upon a corner desk attracts Graham's curiosity. So there is a, a book of magic here. Hmm. This looks interesting. Graham wonders what the symbols mean. Okay. And then another amazing part of the speedrun here, we have to wait until Mordak shows up and goes to bed, because we'll we'll see him through there. So kind of like in King's Quest Three, where you had to to wait until the wizard was asleep to do certain things, they they brought back that mechanic here in uh, in Five. So if you try to go into the bedroom right now, I think you just die. You get the same old, now you die, King Graham. But just like, uh, just like Mananin, Mordak has to sleep all the time, which I don't blame him. That's, that's a big mood there. And we just got to wait till he does it. And I, I think when I was speedrunning this, I, I did some like, some digging into the the programming of the game and it is a random value and the earliest it can happen is after like two minutes or something so they they expect you to just hang out in this room for for two minutes or so i, I don't know many books and scrolls line the shelves of mordak's library as graham looks them over however he finds them mostly unintelligible Many books and scrolls. Graham can see into Mordak's bedroom through the open doorway. And then I think you have to be off to the side here when he appears. Otherwise, he just kills you. Just in case the game crashes. I also got to make sure to sit the the detail to low. But there we go. Okay. So now he just warps in and then goes to bed. Sure. Why he doesn't just warp into bed, I don't know. So this is really hard to see because of the the glitches on screen, but his wand is on the uh, the desk next to him. So we yoink it and then get out of there. Okay, and then hopefully this isn't all screwed up. Okay, so this is where this is where things can go all the way sideways. So this is a known known part of the game where the game can can crash. the The earlier parts I I didn't know of, but this one, this part, the game absolutely crashed on me way back when. So this is this is a wand charging machine. Graham has no idea what Mordek does with this strange contraption, but it couldn't be good. Inside the lower portion, a foul-smelling liquid bubbles, while two dangling spiked gizmos hang on a massive yoke above a couple of flat iron platters. Yeah, I agree. I'd, like that that is a perfectly acceptable rationale about random deaths. So there's that, and then we have the, the charged up magic wand, which we can't use because it's Mordax. And then... And then right after this... 
Graham tosses things the might explode cheese into the machine's bubbling liquid. So it's after this animation is where the game used to crash back in the day. Which is a great place for it to crash right at the end of the game. <laughs> Oh man, there's a frogger, <laughs> frogger memory. <laughs> Mordax wand now barely glows. Perhaps its power has weakened while Crispin's old wand now appears completely energized. Yep. That um that actually happened with me in King's Quest uh four, Ed. <laughs> Where I I thought I was on the right What's track, but it killed me. Here? I'll take care of you, you wine. Dang. No scoped. What the? What have you done to my wand? You think you can outwit me, little man? Ha! Let me show you a thing or two. Uh-oh. Well, he's supposed to turn into a dragon here. Why is it doing this? All right, we gotta. There we go. Okay, interesting. So alt tabbing and tabbing back in fixes it. Okay. All right. So versus the dragon. Probably a tiger. Let's let's become a tiger. Why, you little This also looks like a rabbit, but that's a mongoose. So, it's the way you want to play. Alright. Fire. Turn into rain. GG. Well, animal knowledge and also just trial and error. There's only four options, so... <laughs> you can't just brute force it. Warning. 
This cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information or clues to complete this game. But the game's Please over. Be sure to check your inventory if you decide to skip. But the game's over. This that's the Oh, it fixed up the <laughs> Now why won't you work? I don't know why it redrew the screen to fix that corruption, but I'm glad it did. Oh, Princess Cosima. Well, I did it. Mordak is dead. Dead? Are you sure? Maybe he's only trying to trick you. He's dead, all right. He turned himself into a fire, and I put him out with rainwater. He'll never bother anyone else ever again. But now I have a bigger problem. I don't know what to do about my family or my castle. I don't know how to turn them back to normal. After all you've been through, there must be a way. Crispin! I have the solution to all your problems, Graham. While you and Cedric were gone, I did some asking around, and I found out that your son, Alexander, had the dubious distinction, if you may, of turning Mordak's brother, Mananan, into a cat some time back. Obviously, this deed angered Mordak, who could do nothing about it, since this particular spell could only be undone by the actual perpetrator, your son. It doesn't take a great genius to figure out that Mordak took your family and castle in revenge to try to persuade Alexander to restore Mananan back to his old self. I did discover, as now I see, that your castle and family were miniaturized and imprisoned inside a glass bottle. I did some research and found the spell for turning everything back to normal. Now watch! Alright. Hocus, Hocus, Aliopus! My children! My joy knows no limit! Oh, Father! I'm so glad you're here! He's at the very beginning, but then nowhere else. We had to spend two hours trying to get a snake off out of our oh, way. Princess Cosima, how could I forget you? Come over here. Let me introduce you to my family. This is my wife, Queen Valenice, my daughter, Princess Rosella, and my son, Prince Alexander, who started this whole mess. All of you, this is Princess Cosima from the land of the Green Isles. Without her, none of us would be standing here now. She bravely saved my life. My lady, I am deeply in your debt and I will make it up to you. With your permission, I'd like to travel to the land of the Green Isles to see you. All right, now that we've done with all the formalities, let's get on with business, shall we? Higgledy! Higgledy! Pooh! assured that your castle is right back where it belongs and the right size too but now it's time that everyone returns to their homes with my help of course alakazam alakazoo alaka wait what about cedric what about cedric where is cedric over there mordak may have killed him is there anything you can do about it Hmm, let me think. Ah, yes, I think I know. Abra? Abracabara? No, uh, Abracadora? Hmm, now what is that confounded word? Oh, yes! 
Abra Cadabra! Oh, Carissa! Cedric, it sure is good to see you again. Oh, likewise, I'm sure. All right, enough is enough. Let's get on with it. Okay, Cosima, let's send you home first. Wasn't that the land of the Green Isle? Yes, that's right. I can't wait to see my parents again. Goodbye, Alexander. Perhaps we'll meet again. You can be sure of that, my lady. Before you send us all home, Crispin, I just want to thank you for all your help. And you too, Cedric. I wouldn't be standing here with my family without you two. I'm deeply, deeply grateful. What's Cedric do? All in a day's work, my boy. All in a day's work, right, Cedric? Right, Crispin. Okay, back home you go. Alakazam. Alakazoo. Alakazee. I guess Cedric took a bullet for us at the very end of the game. So that that's something, but... Well, there she is, our happy home, and we're all safe and sound once more. Let's go home, shall we? Yes, let's. Alright, so every completed playthrough of King's Quest V is a 100% playthrough. As far as I know, there's... There, okay, there isn't any percent now that I think of it, but it's really dumb. You actually have to go out of your way to to not get all the points. Come to think of it, you have to you have to brave the RNG, and um, you have to not put the cat in the bag. And I think that gets you the the lower score than 260, because there is a way around around the cat. And you can also get around the, um, oh, it switches over to the MT-32 here for the rest of the credits. Uh, there is a way to get around the guard as well, um, in Mordak's house the second time. You don't actually have to knock out the guard, but it's like, it is, it is stupid, stupid amounts of RNG. So I barely ever ran that category. Oh, Josh Mandel's the, the voice of Graham. I didn't know that, actually. Oh, Amanda's Roberta Williams. Whoever Amanda is. <laughs> uh, DJ Williams is the tailor. Ken Williams, probably not in the voice talent section of this game. Uh, Roberta, woman in town is Roberta. Okay. Hey, Lori, uh, Lori Ann Cole's Isabella. She's the, uh, the creator, co-creator of, uh, Quest for Glory. Uh, Garuka Singh Khalsa is the, um, uh, he's the producer of Quest for Glory. Roberta's the rat. Oh, man. Uh, Singing Ants. Okay, that's the, the composer of, um, uh, most of the music of the, the early quest games. Okay, and 260. Interesting. Yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of Sierra Sierra big names in the voice talent of this game. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And then the only way out of this is, is through this. So if you click on the Sierra button, there's about. So by Roberta Williams, 1990 version that if you enjoyed the saga of king graham and king's quest 5 we're sure you can entice you to try out its illustrious predecessors oh we got a double info uh yep queen of Alanis to air is human help find his way to daventry Paris rosella uh so this is 
Ken Williams got to tell us about all the other stuff. Like Mixed Up Mother Goose. You might enjoy this one. It, it, I'm probably going to have to play this one now. Since, since Ken Williams has been promoting this one since, like, King's Quest 1. Uh, Colonel's Bequest is the first... Um, I forgot. I forgot. Lower Bow. First Lower Bow game. Uh, and it looks it looks neat. I've never played either of the Lower Bow games. And it's another Roberta Williams game, apparently. Simply call Sierra Online at... At blank. Okay. I guess we're not. The wait cursor will appear on the screen any time the game is at a stage where it will not respond to any of your commands. During this time, you will not be able to move Graham, nor will you have access to the icon bar. The hold cursor will appear on the screen any time that Graham is not under your control, but the game will still respond to other commands that don't involve moving Graham. The icon bar and most of its functions will still be available to you during this time. So there's only two instances in the game where the hold cursor appears, as far as I can remember. There's when you have to use it in Isabella's palace to, to get her to um, call off the wolves. And then the other time is in the bakery at the start of the game when the uh, the mother and child are leaving the place after getting a pie and I'm not sure why that choose walk to move Graham to any location that he is able to reach by walking sure choose look when you want Graham to look at something on screen choose action when you want Graham to perform an action on an object for example getting a drink from a pond or jumping onto a rock Choose talk when you want to initiate a conversation between Graham and another game character. Choose item when you want Graham to use that item in the game. An image of the most recently selected inventory item will appear inside the frame. Choose inventory when you want to see and select from the items you are currently carrying. Choose controls when you want to adjust Graham's walking speed, the sound volume. Choose information when you would like... Okay. Alright. Do you really want to quit? Okay, King's Quest V complete. Let's stop the timer on that one. And wrap up the game here. All right, King's Quest V. To air is human. Or no, absence makes the heart go young. All right, completed, yep. Cheated, nope. All legit on this one. Okay, things I liked. Much better graphics than the earlier games. Better usage of sound hardware. Voice acting was pretty good. Um, I like the story in this one much more than the earlier games. Most of the earlier games, I should say. I, I still like Three's story and gameplay loop the best out of the, the first five so far. But... I've also played King's Quest 6 before, and King's Quest 6 is, is to me, far and away the best. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Alright, um, things I did not like. This game has many ways in which you can softlock. A lot of puzzles have pretty nonsense solutions. Um... Uh, Oh, don't, don't worry about this, Sentence Z. I'm using a, uh, an auto-transcription thing, so I'm not actually typing it in, and it's, it's good enough for me. Um, let's see. Uh, a little short for an adventure game. So you can actually see it. It's auto-filling there. Um, some bugs and crashes. Uh, and that probably covers most of that. All right, dank memes. A poise and a snake. Don't talk to me, my grandson, ever again. Sure, that'll that'll be fine for that. Uh, drum and bass didn't really have it. Ayla Mao's. Uh, sure. Sure. Let's say dink, dink the tambourine monster thing was one. So King's Quest Five. If you're playing this game blind, good luck. Good luck, because just off the top of my head, the amount of things that can softlock you, and you wouldn't know it until you got absolutely stuck towards the end of the game. So there's the uh, the shoe in the desert, which you need for the rat. So that's that's one. 
Um, there is eating the custard pie at any point uh, or feeding it to the eagle. That is, that's a soft lock. Um, let's see. Not picking up the uh, the fishing hook in um, uh, the Harpy Island because you need that to get the cheese and you need that to put the cheese eventually in uh, the thing at the end of the game. So that's another one where you wouldn't know it until like half an hour at least later after you, you did it. So there's three soft locks there right off the top of my head. Um, so this one... This one's probably a 5 out of 5, just because of the complete nonsense um, soft locks. Like, it is, it's so damn easy to get to get stuck in this game and and not know where you went wrong. Like, you got, you can pick up an item and then you get points for it and it dings, but then you do one wrong thing and the game doesn't immediately punishes you for it. It punishes you up to hours later and you, there's no indication. Like, oh, man, stuff like that drives me nuts. Uh, and then rating, one to five. So this game was really technically advanced when it came out. It looks really good for 1990. Um, the the music support was great because it had MT32 and all that and Sound Blaster stuff. The the voice the voice acting with the the CD version came later. I think that was 91 or 92. Um, I don't think I got my copy of King's Quest V until 93 or so, 93, 94 maybe. Um, and that's when I got into uh, PC gaming with uh, Sierra games and adventure games. Um, but yeah, like I like I mentioned, King's Quest V was my first my first Sierra game and my first King's Quest game. So I, I picked a hell of a game to, <laughs> to start off my adventure gaming with. Didn't have these easy ass King's Quest ones to start off on. Nope. I started off on this ball breaker of a game. Um, so, just because of the the horrible soft lock situations and dead man walking situations that you can get into in this game, that is automatically knocks it down from a five. Um, there's a lot of goofy stuff in this game, but other than that, I think it's uh, very well put together. I think it's a great looking game. I, I for what it's worth, I think the voice acting is fine. It's not like actively horrible, uh, besides like some Crispin or not Crispin, uh, Cedric stuff. But besides that, I think it's fine. Uh, I think the music is is pretty good for what it is. Um, but man, that's the the issues with the gameplay. Plus, on top of all that, this was the first game in the series that switched over to a completely cursor-driven system rather than the parser, and to me, I I like the cursor games less because there's less less flexibility in allowing the player to figure out puzzles, like um, like going in your inventory, clicking on a plank, and then clicking the plank on a gap is it takes a whole lot less like, like brain power than physically walking your character over, typing out lay plank uh, on gap to have them cross it. Um, I, it, it really made me prefer the parser way that they did it in King's Quest 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Um, so I think that was kind of a step back. Like, I know technology changes and all that. that they really wanted to push using a mouse for it instead. Um, but I think it's it's less of a less of a game for it. So all that combined, I, I'm going to give King's Quest 5 a 3. I still really like King's Quest 5, but man, this game's got a lot of issues. So I recognize that this game has a lot of problems, but I I got the rose-colored glasses for this game, and I can't give it less than less than a three. So good enough, let's say. Okay. So that'll do it for King's Quest V. The next game in the King's Quest series is going to be King's Quest VI, which is an excellent game. Uh, that game has two separate paths and two separate endings, so I think I'm going to go for both endings for that game. Um, I'm going to go for the, the easy ending first and then the hard ending later. And I think, uh, I'm still undecided how I'm going to handle audio for that because that one does properly have a soundtrack for, uh, the SC 55. 
uh, a slightly more advanced MIDI box, and I might just use that for the playthrough rather than the MT32. But we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so that'll uh, that'll do it for tonight. Uh, next time I stream will be King's Quest Six, and we're gonna continue Kodelka because uh, we're still on disc three of Kodelka, and I think we still got a fair amount to do left in that one. So that'll do it for tonight. Thank you for watching. Hope you all have a great D night, morning or evening, wherever you are. Um, I'm glad that the the website and all that actually worked properly this time. It's like my my hard work the last three or so days have paid off and. It sounds like everything's still working and hasn't burst into flames yet, so good. Um, I'm also I also switched up how I encode my vods, so the vods should actually be hosted in the next like two hours rather than eight hours from now, because I, I figured out a much quicker way to do them. So those should be up pretty quick. Uh, if the vods get posted on my Discord and on my Twitter, and the YouTube video says it's it's not up yet. That just means it's still processing. But that's just gonna. That just takes time to process. So yep. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Take care. For more King's Quest and Kodaka. Bye.